Hello, everybody. Welcome to the One Up Yours podcast for Friday, August the 1st. I'm Garnet Lee. Joining me around the table here are Shane Bettenhausen, who's pursing his lips because he has something to say, but we're going to hold on one second because we're going to get around the, rest of the table. Andrew Fister, Philip Kohler back here with us again. Hello. And John Davison, who is perusing the, uh, what, what's that, People magazine? No, it's Life and Style Weekly. And the cover line is, is, is Lindsay Gay. And that's what we're going to be talking about today on the One Up yes, Yours podcast. Yes, she is. <laughs> In addition to that, we have, to say. We, we have some delicious corn chips. And yeah, we don't know what they're called, but they're pretty good. Yeah. Why do we keep having these crazy... This is Korean, right? Yeah, again, Korean. Why do we have this, keep on having crazy Korean people, snack people foods? People keep giving me Korean snack foods. And who, brought, I, who brought the Korean well, snack why foods Why Korean? Here? They're pretty good. I mean, is there a, a reason for the S- Korean Star- theme? StarCraft fans? I don't know. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> so maybe you eat these while you're uh, enjoying your StarCraft. They just say corn chips, and then there's a couple of red peppers on the cover. But they taste kind of like Cinnamon Toast Crunch, but spicy. I, yeah. I think they're more like, sh- you know, like corn, corn pop, puffs. But spicy? Yeah, you know. Well, this is I don't know. very interesting. <laughs> this is very interesting, yes. Yes, indeed. So I had a great uh, response. We're going to do what you've been playing in the first segment, of course. And then I had a great response this morning uh, when I tweeted that I was looking for a second. You, wh- I was you whatted? I tweeted. Twatted. I tw- twatted. I got a lot, a lot of mileage out of your, but uh, I, when your I called lingo. You, and we, we, earlier this week we were at an event, and I look over at John on his Blackberry, and I'm like, you are Twitter. He's like, Yes, I am. I'm like, you Twitter twat, twatter. Well, I was then introduced <laughs> to the term twam, twam, which is Twitter spam. Oh. And, and there is a ca- there is a quite a bit of Twitter spam out yeah, there. Says there Garnet is. Lee. I'm hey, not a Twitter spam. At least spam Garnet man. Lee isn't just uh, sending out disgusting links that he's found from something awful on his Twitter. Like wow. Somebody. Like Sean Elliott? I'm not naming <laughs> names. <laughs> which, by the way, you'll note, I don't follow. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you click once, you learn. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway, this morning I sent out a note just that I was actually, I didn't, didn't have to request anything. I just said, I'm thinking about ideas for a second segment, and I got so many great ideas. I, I emailed one in, but turns out the kids, cable, kids table already stolen it, so what are you going to oh do? Oh, snap. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. snap. Yeah. yeah. We've talked about enough about future consoles, but I wanted to thank everybody who sent in, sent in suggestions, because they were great, and actually have like a list of all of them. I thought today what we'd do because it's really really topical is is the download festival, which is like three or four people suggested variations. The on music this. festival, download festival. Yes, the music festival, download. There festival. is a music festival called Download. I se- that I selected that based on the music festival. That is the name. Or maybe we'll talk about games. Oh, okay. So we'll talk about DLC games. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of the best of the best because uh, even Ryan O'Donnell had this you know, comment the other day about how it's like one of the best times he remembers. In, it, it's a list. It, Shane has a full listing on all the services of the upcoming downloadable games and what's out right now, and it's, it's impressive. It really is impressive. Prepared. Scrolled in his spidery writing. Oh, hey. <laughs> So, so the, <laughs> the, the kind of checklist there is is we're going to hit best of the best, a little talk about then have downloadable games finally arrived, and then things that still probably need some improvement. We'll probably talk about some infrastructure in there, you know, maybe what we think about the upcoming implementation of the live front end that surprise Major Nelson thinks is great. The, Mage thinks it's great. I like I like Larry. He's a good guy, but I thought it was really funny. He's like, yeah, it looks great. Well, of course he thinks it looks great, right? Surprise. Nice and then we're going to do... Yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, check out oneup.com. It's hip. And then uh, in the third segment, we're going to need to do... What? I heard you launched a new news blog at uh, oneup.com. Really? Yeah. I think it's news.oneup.com. It's news.oneup.com. I think we, you can see your Twitters on the side. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah That's nice. an interesting feature. Love it. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Somewhere Sam is going to listen to this and be like, you guys are such bastards. What kind of Sam impression was that? I don't know. It was, it was, it was not the Sam we were thinking of. No. Yosem- was it Yosemite Sam? No, it was <laughs> It was this Sam. It was Samantha. The one that <laughs> Lindsay Sam. That was, was Lindsay Sam. That was a pretty good Samantha Ronson impression, actually. Uh, yeah. She looks like that guy from... Uh, uh, ba- baby shambles. Pete Pretty Do- in pink. No, she looks like Pete Daughtry. No, she looks like the kid. Like, <laughs> with that like, black hat. Oh, like uh, Ducky. Ducky. She totally looks you know, like in the, Ducky. In the real ending, Ducky got Molly Ringwald, and they changed it. The that. real dude. There is no real ending that Ducky got Mar- Molly. No, there is. No, there's not. Yeah. No, there, anyway. <laughs> and then, and we the third segment. We're gonna do news. What? Nothing. Pink. What? <laughs> you got a problem? No, 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 no. You you got up. You talking to me? Yeah. Maybe I'll Twitter something while I'm waiting for you to get <laughs> to the point. Ducky sucks. Twittered by John. <laughs> All right, so I anyway. meant to take you to task for a Twitter you made during E3, actually. Oh, sure, what was you that? You got there and you said, hanging with the video game tastemakers. I that wanted to crawl uh, through I the internet there. and throw you. Is that N Guy Kroll, Jeff Keighley, and Steven Totillo? I thought that was us, Garnet. I thought that was us. Well, as long as you're, as long as you're <laughs> chowing on these crazy h- hot corn chips that aren't corn, <laughs> no, the... Uh, I don't know, man. N Guy took me to the Palm for, a, for dinner. I, that's tastemaking to me. I'm hurt. 
Oh, he, and you're actually looking. He, 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 really he, really he's very. He could sell that shit all day. Make long. a tear just rolled down I, his cheek. I bought some Nyquil for the game videos guys at the Family Mart. That was that, that was very good of you. That counts. <laughs> that was very good of they you. Wanted, you were also they wanted a cheap easy high or something. <laughs> Every each one wanted one bottle. They all, they, I, it was weird. Like Jen and I had to buy them all bottles of Nyquil. <laughs> Besides, what led you to and the I conclusion that that's who I was hanging with because I said that? They're kind of the uh, Illuminati of the uh, games press world. The tastemakers, one might say. The, ta the, <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> one the might. The fresh makers. Oh, they like know. Taster's Choice. Yes. There you are. They're the free toes. They're, the <laughs> they're freeze dried, crystallized <laughs> game editors. Not you. Just, just add water, and Steven will give you an opinion. <sighs> Who's all been right. playing video games? I've been playing. I. We've all video been games. playing Actually, some video games. I haven't. Like, remember yesterday... <laughs> You've I been podcasting like a fiend. That's true. I've heard more of you on my iPod in the last week. He's taken over. <laughs> I know. It's yeah, hot. It's the kids. They're taking over. But no, You like it, don't you? I do. I saw you. <laughs> Skip, I saw you. No, no, you have to do that with a different inflection. You like it, don't well, you? More about games here, kids. Oh, sorry. sorry. Back on track. <laughs> I, I saw that you on your Facebook had said you were tired from being up late playing Soul Calibur. And now, yeah. I'm, now I'm tired from being up late playing Soul Calibur. I don't think he actually night. said he had been playing. Oh, I don't remember the He room. had been saying he was... Right, I had been playing it, but what I was staying up late for was getting um, new hats. <laughs> <laughs> and wow! And shoes and Soul Calibur Four, the haberdashery, and uh, gauntlets and shit like that. I did get some new pants yesterday for Tira. They I got some new good. pants. My Voldo looks sweet. I have a, a, a Mohican black ninja Voldo what kind now. Of, what kind of cod piece are you equipped? He's with? not sporting a cod piece. He has baggy oh. ninja pants. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. That's not. You guys Voldo. are making me really excited to get into the game. <laughs> I you just were playing it, it this morning, which is like that's I, I played it for like 20 minutes yeah. this morning because I, I picked it up yesterday after work and then got home from work and just totally passed out and didn't get to play so it. So we're all playing Soul Calibur It before? ships with some actual time-altering device in the code, I think, because I put it on last night and the next thing I know it's 2 a.m. and it's like, <laughs> that, that's how did that happen? Exactly. You were up till 2 in the morning playing? I was, So, yeah. was, so was I. I was, wow. I was playing online. Yeah, I was wow. making runs through the uh, story mode and those... Which takes about bad. five seconds. Exactly. No, unless you're playing... Yeah, I was able to go through the story <laughs> well, mode completely and in like 20 minutes minutes before work. Unless you're playing on hard. I did play, I try because I couldn't remember what you had to do to unlock the apprentice. So I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe I have to beat it on hard with Yoda. Oh, but no, you, you have, have to perfect it, right? Bullshit. It's uh, bullshit. There's a lot about this game which is bullshit. And the fact <laughs> that it is utterly fucking absurd. I mean, what, what are you wearing? <laughs> have you not seen so You're like, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> these these storylines are fanciful. I don't believe I mean, it anymore. It's always been I a bit absurd, but this Soul is Calibre. just like, all right, you and you, yeah. <laughs> and there's some armor's gonna wander over and mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, like up the tower, and then some dude with swords bigger than yeah. his body is gonna grow out of his wrist. <laughs> and also uh, Darth Vader from another dimension. Yeah, right. right. For some reason. I mean, if you, if you want a lot of Soul Calibur, we just the Retronauts on Soul Calibur is up as of two days ago, and it's great. But like, yeah, as someone who's played every game in the series, it's always been absurd, increasingly absurd. But at this point, like the story mode is so out there, you're just like fighting oh, no, it's random, irrelevant. random it's awesome. people and like strange, you know, circumstances on you and them and sometimes it gets really hard like I was playing on hard trying to get through his Tira and like you know when you get fight the enemies who have auto heal you can't throw you can't ring them you out you can't ring them out yeah it's like and, the, yeah. and when you kill one the next one spawns right, right. next to you yeah. like, you're fighting four <laughs> of them in a row it's pretty difficult so are you going for Tira is like that going to be one of your secondary characters well, she, I was trying to make her my new number two character because Ivy was so different and I had said on this podcast and many others that she's gimped and Richard from my she's like no stick with her stick with her and I, I am now relearning Ivy and I, I think nice. what, they, what they do with each game is that because Ivy is such a hardcore character, they like purposely make her more convoluted and difficult and change all her shit up. So again, like it's all different. It all flows differently. And but they did make her look like a transvestite this time. A little bit. But <laughs> when you actually master her stuff, I think she's actually better than she was in 3. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, if, you know, if you call like a man's jaw and <laughs> facial structure. And, uh, have you noticed the way that some of the characters that it, it throws at you are almost completely nude? Like, it'll send, like, yeah, oh yeah, a yeah. nude man in a thong, a helmet, and an axe after you. And his name will be, like, Fred or something. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen some of the amazing custom characters people are making already online? Like, on the message boards, I've seen a bunch. And yeah, there's some really impressive ones. I saw a, an amazing R. Kelly on... R. Uh, Kelly. On wow. Whoa. <laughs> it's fantastic. That's pretty hot. Yeah. All right, so let's let's go around. What, what platform are you playing on? 360. 360.
PS3. PS3. P Ooh, PS3, three to two. Nice. Why did you guys choose because of the controller? Or because um, of Darth I heard a lot of people are choosing it because of the controller. I've talked to a few people, a few of my friends who are. I got a PS3 arcade stick, but most, more importantly, I just wanted to round up my PS3 game library a bit. That's cool. I'm kind of in the exact same boat. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm actually not playing on anything on my PS3, and I'd be nice to play some on my PS3. Well, yeah. And it's kind of a PS3 series. Yeah, it also offers a full install, which makes faster load times nice. by about, like, it is pretty by about four seconds. You'll be able to full install on the 360 Event when the update yeah, comes out. Eventually, and uh, it also has Darth Vader, who is cooler than Yoda. I, I do yes. agree with that. I Yoda actually am a little bit sad. I kind yeah. of want Darth but Vader. But Yoda's not bad. There's no tournament play that's going to allow Yoda, Vader, or the Apprentice, is there? Do you play no in, serious do play. Do you play in tournaments a lot? I mean, okay, <laughs> no, there's not going to be any serious play. Like, if your friend chooses one of those three characters, you're going to be like, okay, whatever, this is a bullshit well, match. The mode we should lets, enroll Garnet. the mode the that lets you play <laughs> any character, because there's two online there's, modes, right? There's, there's the anything regular goes. Regular versus and special versus. Yeah. yeah. And you can play the Force characters in special versus. But you can't play them in regular versus. No. no. But, but then in, but then in regular smart. versus, you can't use the armor, you can't use the leveled up stuff, you can't use the new weapons. It's like straight vanilla. All, All right, skill. so in your experience, has there been any trouble with the with the insta kills because I haven't really run into uh, it at all. They, I have never been in a fight where I, anyone was allowed to do one. It's, I know it's that rare. Unless, unless you're just a turtle, like it's not going to happen. Like, like we, critical finishes, right? Like we played for six hours that one day at Ryan's house and never. It it's never. really funny because everyone was worried about them, and then as it turns out, it's really not an issue. It's yeah. not even an issue at all because it just doesn't happen. Right, more or less. Because you have to, you have to guard. You have to have someone who's, tur like you said, turtling so much and guarding so much, and you're attacking so much and beating down their guard that it finally gets to that. Yeah. It just doesn't. Okay, but just when you whittle it down and then the bar flashes red and you yeah, can, yes, and yeah, you just do A, B, and yes, kick or something, all, four, or all, all four, all four buttons, buttons yeah. one hit kill. It's like a cutscene it goes to. You yeah. Know. Um, but so I have some questions. I was playing online last night, and you know we'd been really skeptical of how this online was going to turn out because traditionally online fighting games don't run so well. Right. VF was probably the best before this, and uh, so last night I get on the PS3 and. I, I play some friend matches and it runs perfectly. My, the dude's the dude's here in San Francisco, so I was like, "Well, this you is playing Ted." No, I was playing my friend Oscar, and like, like I was on Wi-Fi and he was on Wi-Fi, but still no lag, except for w at one moment. Instead of like slowing down a little bit, it stopped. I was like, "Okay, we're gonna get booted off." And then like two seconds later, it just started again. Weird. That's the way it handles lag. Actually, yeah. I was reading about yeah. that. It's really weird. It just like stops and then it catches up and then it goes back right. again. But the weird thing about yeah. this though is that there have been a lot of people saying like I've heard such mixed reactions to the online like i've heard about half the people i've talked to say the online's work perfectly for me and then the other half are like i have all sorts of problems i hate it well so the, but the, the main problem was if you just go to like random match like quick match 90 percent of the time last night at midnight on ps3 you'd get matches are full and you're like really like really full all of them in the world so you just keep trying and trying and trying and huh. you, you know after that's like a, weird. two minutes you'd probably get a match yeah. but that's really weird the other weird thing was guys if, if any of the 360 guys you two have played it online mm -hmm. there's no chat during the fight itself you can chat before the fight and after the fight and right before the fight starts it ends and I think uh, I'm imagining it's the same on 360. I'm just curious. I don't know yet. I haven't tried it. But yet. I like that they're doing that. Because I mean, it means you can't. Yeah, you can't distract the person. Yeah. And yeah, it, it works out. I mean, like, because you're usually paying so much attention to the fight. It's kind of mm -hmm. when something really cool happens, it'd be nice if you'd be like, oh, that was awesome. But, you know, <coughs> overall, I'm I'm pretty impressed by the online play because I was able to do my GIs and time them correctly. I mean, really? With Ivy, it's a lot of really tough timing to catch people in the air, and I was able to do it. And yeah, I was impressed. This is interesting because one of the things that went into my consideration when I like went, it's really funny. I went to Virgin with a bunch of the cheat guys, and I was. I was I was set in the first place to get PS3, and then like I got into this whole back and forth between 360, PS3, 360, PS3. But one of the things I considered at the end was like, you know, fighting games online really rarely work that great, and the most important thing is to get good at the stick, learn your characters, because the the serious games are when we're sitting around in the demo room right. and we're playing our you know either our first character, our second character, or our third character. And I was like, you know what, that's what matters the most, and it would give you fun to play it on PS3. Well, and also the online, when you're playing with a friend in a friend match, when the battle's over, you just go back to the character select, character select screen, you're chatting, it's fun. But when you're, playing, cool. when you're playing other people, there's no way to rematch somebody. If you, like, there's not? There's no rematch. I wish yeah. they would add that. Yeah, like, it, I wish you could just auto rematch. That's kind of an arcade feature, too. I don't know why yeah. they wouldn't maybe have they can that add, in there. Maybe they can add it later. Yeah, that would be cool to add back in, I think. But uh, the game seems to be a big hit. A lot of people playing online. So yeah, I'm, it, I'm seemed, excited. it seemed to be selling very well. What do you guys think about the uh, likelihood of downloadable content for it? I've heard it's happening. Well, I mean, well, I mean I'm sure it's happening. That confirms I'm, I'm, them today, right? The, sound, a, the soundtracks, that's confirmed. And then there's an Xbox Live weapons, weapons and armor pack. Right. That's like 200 points or something. Well, we've heard the rumor of additional characters down the road. Do you think? Um, do you guys think that's a good thing? And are you guys going to use it at all? Or do you think it's purchasable characters, right? When yeah, you yeah I think so. Switch? Presumably. They haven't said. But uh, I think it's a good idea. It's, never, it's the first fighting game with DLC, really. I think it's a great idea.
I mean, I, guess, I love I guess, the. I guess DOA had some stuff. Characters are cool. Uh, I, the only problem I have with it is that I think most of these characters will just be, you know, palette swaps. I hope not, because there's really only two new characters in this game. I mean, th three if you count. Hildy you know, is really new. Hildy's fantastic. Algol is new as well. He's have really you gotten good at Hildy? No, she's like she, I she's, really struggle she's with her. She's very deep, actually, and same I, with, I believe same that. Algol is really cheesy, but he's actually interesting and has, he's a very defensive player. Um, you know, then then Yoda, Vader, and Apprentice are all kind of they're new, but you, you don't get all three. So, but yeah, in terms of actual Soul Calibur characters, there are two new ones. Like when I played Hildy, I've been okay as long as I can keep someone you know at range and and utilize her pike, it's good. Uh, but her, then short, her short sword's good too. Actually. Her short sword is good, but it's really close. So if someone comes into that like middle range, they can just like wail on you. Yeah. It's very hard. It's very hard to reestablish your spacing. Like I haven't figured out. I mean, I'm sure if you like study up on her, you can figure out what her spacing moves are. But I was really struggling to find. Okay, what do I do to get back into her into her attack zones? I like the fact that Algol has tentacles that burst out of his chest, and then he pukes giant pink spears at you. <laughs> I also like that he sits in a throne. And he sits in a throne. <laughs> the throne, yeah. throne just teleport for no, is for so no cheap. reason. Particularly if you're on the edge of an arena, and he'll just like summon his throne, and it'll just push you up. <laughs> awesome. The throne teleport is so cheap. Yeah, seriously, and it's so. E By the way, some of Yoshi's move, Yoshi Mitsu's moves are really easy. Like getting him into like helicopter mode and flying around is like super easy now. It's super easy. You play Yo Yoshi Mitsu? I played some Yoshi Mitsu. Yes. Weird. Well, Yoshi Mitsu is fun, dude. He's like he has really really interesting moves. He throws people off. He's for freaks. He, well, <laughs> hi. Have you met me before? I'm just saying. Surprise! Imagine that. Well, this is, I think this is the first game that everybody on the podcast is playing mm -hmm. ever. I know, right? Weird. What a unity. You know what? So here's the problem I have, and I like I have questions into Sony but I haven't gotten a response yet, is I hate my PSN name. It's it's awful. You can make a new one. I have Wait, to make a whole new account. Can you can you say it on air? What? Your PSN name? It's awful. It's awful. My PSN name right now that I'm getting rid of, so like don't even bother, I if, is... I wonder if you were the, one of the ones I haven't said yes to because it seems like a random it's, kid. It's mixed down underscore one up. It's, it's awful. So it's I, like... I, I don't think you're my friend. <laughs> no, we are friends. We are friends. In real life or yeah, on he PSN? Meant, he meant that for I meant in real life. <laughs> <laughs> hey -oh. Anyway, I it's, because, it. it's because I honestly, like, I'm, okay, I will admit, I did not read the fine print. I have actually gone on the forums. I realize that it says in the fine print that it, that it warns you, evidently, once you choose this name, you won't be able to so choose. So are you about to say you wish this was like Xbox Live and that you could spend money to change your name? <laughs> Well, that's that's a better alternative than not being able to change your it name, all. It's not but so here, bad, dude. No, it's not. But here's the weird part. No, it's terrible. <laughs> no. It's fucking awful. It's awful. <laughs> it could be a lot worse. Well, <laughs> you're right. It could be all mid 80s right exactly labor. it was like i was like searching for something like i couldn't use my normal name i think for if it was just game. master it, mixed down i think if it was just mixed down that'd be kind of cool all right so maybe i'll switch if it just it was mixed 1983 down. it'd be but awesome <laughs> <laughs> if it was like i was 16 then so how, it was kind of awesome how about acid burn i like that <laughs> it's rackers I kind of like that. Anyway, uh, do I use like a one for the I or yes, yeah, it's and burn it's BRN. And the, this is this conversation is retarded. So. All right. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> what I don't get is why they would make you jump through the hoops of creating a new uh, login on the PS3, creating a new PSN account, and then getting your new name, as opposed to just saying, "Oh, well, we'll let you change names." Why do they want all these dead? Why do they want all these dead accounts that no one's using on Is their database? I don't know. <laughs> because I want to start building up my character, but I haven't started messing with all, any you of don't that. Don't like what your name is, right? But since it's like <laughs> free to make accounts, can't you just make a new name? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Well, I'm gonna you make have, a you new have to add everybody again, but yeah. right. So I'm gonna make a new oh, account bummer. on my P <laughs> make a new account on my PS3, and then make a new login and transfer my yes. old one to like some dead email. It's like fuck a fucking pain I in the ass. I think just live with mixed down one up. Yeah. I hate there it. There you go. Now no, I hate it. Knows and you're gonna get a ton of friends. Yeah. I hate that name. I really hate it. I hate it. So can we get back to the game a minute? Has anyone been playing through the tower? <laughs> yes. In fact, the tower is the tower is responsible for me staying up well, until two. Well, it's the best way to get money and items it, by it by was, far. It was so addictive. I was just how like, how far are you? Like not very. I'm like level seven right now. But when you, when you get like, to 15, it gets really. Is this yeah, like adventure it mode? It gets really super hard. <laughs> well, I, I guess. No, it's, it's, it's no. It's, it's just not. like story mode, except in like little bits and pieces. It, well, what it does, it, it it serves the purpose that story mode did, but without all the bullshit story. It's yeah. just like, <laughs> all right, we're just gonna throw ten guys at you. You beat the crap out of them, and we'll give you a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Okay, go. <laughs> really, I think as someone who's played all the Soul Calibers, I'm actually disappointed by the single player modes in this game. Like, really, they're all kind of the same. Like, yeah, the tower is really not that different than the story no. mode, and. 
It's, but it's better than the Chronicles of the Swords bullshit. But it's always a tag team, right? It's always two yeah, characters. And like, uh, you have a random weird guy with you who you don't even know who he is. You know what I liked? The last one I played really was was uh, Soul Calibur 2, where you had the map and you were moving around the map and it had. Yeah. Most that people was cool. consider that to be the pinnacle. That was I liked that really a lot. good. Oh, that was so oh, addicted to that. Modes. But I think the fact that the online play is here and that it functions then it doesn't really matter if the single-player modes are kind of generic or derivative. Which was the one that was sort of theme what it was throwing? That was that one, where, where it wasn't just drop... Because this is just dropping three, right. four characters at a time in sequence after you. But that one, it would be, here are a bunch of guys in sort of generic armor, and then here's a bunch of lizard guys. And, right. and it would try and have right. the and then you get to a final the story. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, and you get to a final boss for each like little dungeon there or whatever. There are bosses to the tower, but it's just it's like well, Astaroth's here. He's a boss. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's big. He's a boss. <laughs> but it's great. Yeah, well, so that, we're we're like really all really really up on Soul Calibur. There you go. Wow. Consensus went up yours pick for the summer. Pretty much everyone in the offices. I, I've only heard one person say that it was bad, and that oh. was Nick Sutner. So, Phil, you have no idea what's going to transpire over the next few weeks as people start to really like pick up their characters and yeah, then start walking around the office and going, let's, let's we play use a game. Nick on that popular podcast, One Up FM, actually, <laughs> was, right. was openly dismissive yeah, of the Soul Calibur phenomenon. Haven't <laughs> we all kind of said up front that you know, Nick's opinions, being from a foreign land, <laughs> <They're> are <useless. laughs> at best suspect. <laughs> at be Dude, Nick is on his own wavelength. He, he like he, operates he on Sutner land. He I didn't mean to get us into a discussion well, of why we he, don't trust Nick. He does think that Ang Lee's Incredible Hulk is the best movie ever made. <laughs> he does? Yeah, he does. He does I don't know about not. the best movie ever made. Somebody told me. He does like it a lot. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> but what I, my, my point was... By the way, he was originally your intern, Andrew Fister. Yeah. You're accountable for not, <laughs> not fixing him. He was fine when I had him. My <laughs> point was pretty much everyone at 1UP seems to like this, which doesn't usually happen. Like, it seems like with most games... There are at least a couple of really All strong the have been like that. I mean, I remember yeah. back in '99 when I mean, back when before One Up, when it was everyone on EGM played through Soul Calibur on the Dreamcast, and we yep. would yeah. end up staying till late at night and annoying wives and girlfriends because we were playing and it. The, and the thing that I find really fascinating about it is that people like me, I'm not into fighting games at all, but I love Soul Calibur. I can. Still you better figure out your it. character and start studying. I up. recommend Mitsurugi. He's I'll get killed. It's, it's per it's perfect for beginners. Fighting. There's something about sword fighting that sort of transcends fighting games. I think. Yeah. And what did it occur to me is that there is definitely still room for a good lightsaber only less ridiculous armor and boobs more kind of people with lightsabers fighting game like i i would i would play an all star wars soul caliber well i think there's a lightsaber game coming to Wii next year yeah get it's a like clone wars get excited yeah, you know what not, strikes me about same. all this is that there's still room for a good fighting game that's not weapons based and it this it's it's sad that Tekken has not lived up to that over the last few uh, iterations. Well, we haven't played Tekken 6. Okay, well, we haven't played Tekken it 6. It looks really good. It does look pretty. And VF5, the new version, VF5R? VF5, I forget what it's called. Uh, it has some when, kind of suffix on when it. When yeah. that comes out for whatever's going to be out for it. I think, you guys, I think you might down, be talking actually. about <laughs> Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe. Oh, well, hold on a second. Before again. we go there, VF, <laughs> I, I like VF, but I think the thing about VF that, that sort of made it a hair off-putting is it got so hardcore with the whole frame counting thing and well, like are people really into that is that it sort of is a little bit you then Tekken 6 is the game for you because Soul Calibur appeals to everybody right like there are people in the office who are really really good at Soul Calibur but there's also people who are more casual who play it and enjoy it and I think Virtual Fighter sort Tekken of lost is that actually appeal. the ultimate crowd pleaser in terms of 3D fighting games I really do I it think was it, I think it's the one where you, you walk up to it you can mash some buttons have a lot of good have a good time Eddie Gordo it looks good yeah, I mean, although Mortal Kombat vs. DC is, is definitely a crowd pleaser as People well. People keep it saying was. good things. In fact, well, you and your little mob of That's what I was just going to talk about. We're all saying nice things about <laughs> it. Uh, the we, kids. We got to play it at uh, at Comic-Con. We talked about it a little bit on the Comic-Con podcast for 1UP FM, and it was really fun. Like, we had a blast playing it. Like, it wasn't – it was not anywhere near what I would call a good game necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> but – Wow. It's it was actually kind of lame. That's what, it, that's it, what wait, were you playing it with Sutner? Sutner? Well, I mean, like, the f as someone who's reviewed every Mortal Kombat in the last six years, what he's talking about is when you play a regular fighting game, like, it requires like skill. A Virtua Fighter, a Tekken, or Soul Calibur. There's like pinpoint precision with when you press a button, things happen, right. and like you have tons of moves at your disposal, and it doesn't feel canned. Mortal Kombat's not like that. Like Mortal think, Kombat, like combos kind of happen and stuff. I think this one might be a little better than previous games. I know that um, Jason Bertrand was with us. He was playing as well, and uh, you know we were saying on the podcast that you know it kind of feels like. This is a game for more casual fighting fans. They're just going to really enjoy it. It's like a nice party game yeah. when you've got buddies around. That's the whole idea. But, uh, but Jason kind of chimed in afterwards and was like, 
actually, I think people who are really hardcore fighting fans will like it as well because he he got really into it as well, and you know he's a pretty hardcore he soul hardcore. caliber. Player. He did really. Yeah, he liked it. Because I think lot. the thing for me, like I, like I played it at yep. E3, and I think the thing for me about it is that if someone tells you, okay, to do this move, it's quarter circle forward BBY, and you do quarter circle forward BBY nine times out of ten, you hit it. You don't have to like sit there and master like what's the timing between the quarter circle, the B, the B, and the Y. It's like if you do quarter circle forward BBY, you will hit the move. And that's rewarding. Yeah, it's, it's more forgiving. It's way more forgiving. And I think it's a brilliant use of the license this time to make the DC, yeah. b to add DC characters because this it's for you know kids and families and everybody. It's Which not, characters it's not, did you get to play? It's not just for the niche. Uh, we played. Uh, we pr we tried pretty much everything that they had available, which was like um, Flash, Batman, Superman. Um, Catwoman was playable for the first time at that event that we went to, so we got to try out a little bit of she Catwoman. Cool? She was cool. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll Flash right. Flash was the ultimate because he's he, super overpowered because he's, he's super he's overpowered. fast he has a move where he like literally just runs across the screen appears on the other side and hits the person and it's like unblockable because you don't turn around fast enough what about aquaman <laughs> i i demanded i interviewed ed boone and i interviewed jimmy Palmiotti who's writing the game and in both of those interviews i demanded of them that aquaman be in the game i'm so proud of you they would not reveal whether or not he's going to be in it but i said listen this is whether or not i'm going to buy the game depends on aquaman Dude, his event. fatality in should involve a fish being talked to i agree <laughs> i agree wholeheartedly because that's, that's that's all he really does talks to fish uh and they they unveiled at comic-con that um joker is going to be in the game so that's nice. kind of cool uh nice. they said they're going to include villains so i would assume probably lex luther is the other main villain who's going to be in there did they show you the uh, the way like if you pull off a move, some of the moves have secondary additions to them that will like power them up that that actually make it more technical? They didn't really show that to us. I know that um, Jason and the others kind of got into that talk, and at that point I was like, too hardcore for me. Don't get it. Yeah, so like <laughs> it it, ad it actually adds a little bit of depth if you're into that to where like so like the move that that, that I was playing with was um, Batman has a deal where he throws his batarang, mm -hmm. and if you and that's like uh, quarter circle forward BB. We don't need the move. You know, anyway, <laughs> anyway, if you know the move. The these guys are listening. The there's, there's like there's like a frame count again back to frame counting, but there's like there's like a very small window that if you do the accompanying move to go with it, you'll like double up on your batarangs and power them up. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool. Cool. Gives you a little bit of depth, a little the bit other, of extra fighting depth. The other thing I was surprised about is that the uh, what are they calling it aerial combat or whatever, where you knock somebody down and then you kind of like. This is like the dead or alive thing. When you go off a level and there's like another level you like in jump, jump down. Yeah, yeah but you, you actually down. you do this little like sort of mini game where you're like fighting with them as you fall down and you're kind of like doing button presses to like try and be the person on top and if you're the person on top when you hit the when you hit the bottom then you do a ton of damage so to them. So it's like a quick time event kind of. Exactly. Like, yeah. And um do you I, it looks super lame like it looks <laughs> bad, but it actually was really fun and it was always like when you got good at it um we were kind of like we would go back and forth a ton. In one in one fall, and it would always be like we would be cheering when we get. It was it was fun. <laughs> it, we really enjoyed it's it. It's MechWarrior 2. Do you remember MechWarrior 2? Like it had that bot. It had the jacking thing on on Xbox. Where you like? Do you remember that? Does anyone remember that? The Day Not One really. Studios. Mech no. Assault. Mech Assault 2. I was right, gonna sorry. I was gonna make a, a a born conspiracy comparison. Is it like the bit where he jumps off the stairs and rides the guy to the bottom? Is it that kind of thing? <laughs> I don't I don't. <laughs> well, you're kind of fighting. It's like you're fighting Simon Says st style, yeah. right? Like okay. like the person attacking it, like you know X X. So is y. Goal to to land on top of your opponent, yes, so that you yeah. kind of yeah. Yep. And there's also there's also like a super move power up that's within there as well. So if they, like the person who initiates the fall is able to get the upper hand on the person who's playing defense, there's like a bar on the side that's filling up, and if it fills up all the way, they can pull a super move, which is also contextual with the fall. Like you know, you might grab them and throw them around and fling them down into the ground before you get there, and then land on them or something. Like that. All right, another question. They've said before that uh, the DC characters will not have have fatalities, but the the heroes, but the Mortal Kombat characters and villains presumably. The villains have fa fatalities. Will, so how violent are the fatalities? I mean, the teen's been pushed pretty far these days. You can have, I didn't you, see any of the. Fatalities, you can have blood in teen now. But I did see the uh, the heroes do have replacing the fatalities they have I think they're calling them brutalities they are called brutalities about, currently, I think they might change the name about actually animalities <laughs> uh, they didn't show any of that I'm, I'm see hoping. babalities uh, Friendship, but, friendships the brutalities oh. are actually you know surprisingly brutal brutal <laughs> yeah you get uh, well, like what, what did you see like superman's is um he punches a dude into the ground until like it's just his head sticking up out of the ground it's cartoony a little bit but it, <laughs> it's I mean, like it, bugs bunny does that you know I guess. Yeah. Old it was time. cool. I thought it was good. Right. I saw it too. That's Bugs what Bunny's I saw, not so. confirmed for the game yet. <laughs> yeah. <But laughs> I don't think Bugs he's Bunny. A DC character. Yeah. Uh, isn't it Warner? He's Warner. Bugs Bunny is Warner. Warner. There, there we go. go. Yeah, Dark Knight is the most successful film Warner's ever had already. <laughs> Just saying. Isn't that crazy? Already? Already. Wow. Already.
Wow. Oh, there you go. Okay, anyway, so I was surprised. That looks good. All right. Can we talk about another game? Yes. Sure. Yeah, yeah, DC. Please. Yeah, we well, definitely we, We've can. also been playing another game. Today on the fighting game hour. Tales of Vesperia. Tales of Vesperia. Going from fighting game to RPG. Yes. It's a natural flow. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's fanciful and heartwarming and delightful. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you talk about this last well. week? Well, we played more now. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, I played a ton this weekend. Um, but you, do you not like the battles? No, I like the I like battles. the battles. I like the battles a lot. The problem is, and I, <laughs> I love JRPGs. I'm used to the fact that pacing isn't good in JRPGs. It's very JRPGs move slow. I yeah. get that. But the pacing in this is worse than any JRPG I've ever well, played. I've, I've already, you've further than me, but I've already encountered a lot of like, oh, go back to where you just went. I hate that. It's and it's I it's not only that, that, but it's go back to where you just went and then sit through like 20 more minutes of talking. Yeah. And it's talking that doesn't amount to anything. Do people sit through two hours of us fucking talking? That's what are you, true. What the hell are you talking about? Three hours. Three later. some weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but as I said last week, I, you know, as far as I am, I'm still looking for like the twists and turns that surprise me. What's coming? Me. There's a mature twist coming. Yeah. But, uh, I heard Andrew. According to Fitch, like in the <laughs> there are in the in the eleventh hour, there's like some amazing twists, and I, I'm waiting for them. There are some some surprisingly mature things that happen throughout the plot. However, I'm not convinced that they pay off. You know, right. I haven't finished the game yet, so I still don't know. But it seems like the kind of stuff where, hey, this is shockingly mature, but then they're probably just going to drop it and not really deal with the ramifications of those. I'm curious. Like uh, last week, I said I was disappointed with the graphics. Are you at all disappointed with the graphics? I think that there are some areas in the game that look really beautiful. I think the color choices are really good, yeah. actually. However, and the the, it, the it, detail it doesn't agree? look. Would you agree with high res PS2 game as he described it last week? I think it's a little better than that. Maybe like not an much. Xbox One game, like a good Xbox One game. <laughs> but so you give the, the graphics battle. a seven point three five nine. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the battles, though, like the the visuals in the battles are awful. Like. Just the battlefields look really terrible. Well, they're they're kind of 2.5D, and occasionally, like in one of the like close planes, you'll see just like weird cardboard cutouts of things that yeah. look bad. Yeah, but it's overall, I'm charmed a little bit. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> I have I have a question about a game that I haven't played yet, but I wonder if any of you have that Sega thing, Valkyria. Oh, I played a little bit of it. It's really cool, actually. It's like the hand-drawn first-person tactical yeah, and it, RPG it, it, or whatever it is. It's, it plays like a Final Fantasy Tactics, except you actually get to move around and like aim your guns. And the story is interesting, and the art, art style is very unique. It's um, all, I mean, it's all in that kind of anime, yeah, sort of anime style, it, right? It, it was the first game to have like the brush stroke cell shading anime thing. Like other games ripped it off since, but. Uh, uh, a little bit I played, I was pretty impressed. It comes out in like, October, I think. Oh, okay. There's one other game I want to mention super quick. Um, at the an XBLA game called uh, Go Go Break Steady just came out a few weeks ago. Go Go I think it, Break Steady. It, it totally it? got overlooked, but um, I think that people should go out, go back and check it out because I got to try it this week, and it's actually surprisingly good. It's like, it's a weird mix of a rhythm game and like a puzzle game. Sort of taking the thing Puzzle Quested by mixing RPGs and puzzle games. I've never even heard of this game. It's it's like a breakdancing sure game. It's out? Yes, it's out. All right. It's a breakdancing game, and you you do a rhythm <laughs> game to do your breakdance. <laughs> you're gonna let him you're gonna let him slip that by just it's like that. It's a breakdancing game. It's 1983 game. again. Exactly, exactly. What does it look like? Uh, it's like cel shaded, and I don't know. Weird. Uh, you do like a break. Is the music good? No, oh. not really. <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> that is a problem in a music game. But yeah. it's really cool. But you do you do a break dancing like you do a rhythm game to do the break dancing, and then every couple of seconds, if you're doing good at the game, it turns you into like puzzle mode where it's sort of like Zuma, and you have to shoot a colored what? blob into the other <laughs> colored blobs. Are you sure this? Game I was not expecting you to say that. I'm not I know. Sure. I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure this game exists. It exists. I'm totally serious. This is and a dream, Philip had. You had sat it's on really your crazy couch because in your underwear, drinking Nyquil. That's right. <laughs> just imagining the this, game right? videos guys gave me the Nyquil, and uh, they told uh, me what to do with it. Go go hyperblast. What? Go go break steady. Is right. the title. Check it out. It's on Xbox Live. At least okay. download a demo. It's really cool because it's just it switches you so quickly between these two very different game styles. It's just. It, it exercises a weird that, gaming that, muscle that I That's a, that that's a teaser done. for the exciting downloadable game segment we have in the that's next That's right. Episode. That is. Yeah. That we is. have more games to talk about here. We have, I have another game. Yeah, you go wow, on. we have games galore. I have a game that threatens to destroy my life. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about. Is it Mr. Slime again? No. <laughs> it's Little Big. Oh, Slime man. It. And I just got to say, I thought like I'd spend 30 minutes. It was like five hours later. The ultimate time sink. I think it's going to destroy my life. It's I got I just to play like say. five minutes of this at the game videos, and it's I was super unhappy that I couldn't play it at all the rest of the week. Paradigm shifting. Yep. I mean, that's why everyone walked away from the. Uh, you know, I sound really weird in my head now. Do you like change my. No, I think you sound good. I didn't do all right, that's good. Um, I, that's why everyone walked away from E3 uh, looking at the looking at the demo. Everyone got good demos. There was, you know, they had it in there in the, uh, what they call that room, the 
PlayStation lounge, lounge. the press lounge or whatever. And it, they were doing, they were letting people create in it. And the create is just amazing. I mean, we sat down and created with it and it was so fun. It's like you, you start to create and, and all of a sudden you just go, wow, there's so much I want to do. But the thing is, I spent three hours creating and in that three hours, did I, I made nothing yeah. even resembling an impressive level. I was just fucking around. But I realized the amount of time it's going to take to make what I really want to make is epic, but I'm prepared to invest that time. And it's doable because it the, doable. the tool is very easy to use. Right. But it doesn't it doesn't do it all for you. You know, you, you have to you still do it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you definitely have to bring a lot to the table. Yeah. That's the what other I, thing, this is what I was talking about where I was saying, you know, I think that that people will get engaged by it and they'll play around with it and have fun with it, but what it'll be is it'll be very creatively expanding and there'll come a point where you realize, okay, I better come up with like a plan for like whatever my first game is right. going to be, yeah, and then and then move on to the next one. I'm kind of glad that our well, you speak in a second, but ours doesn't have online, and I'm kind of glad because overwhelming. It'd be overwhelming. It yeah. Sounds like something you'd buy like a sheet of, or a book of graph paper for, and yeah. plan your shit out. Ahead yeah, of time. sort of similar, I guess. It's like beginner's yeah. game design almost. Yeah. I also really liked uh, the thing that I didn't know about, so I was really excited to see this that the game videos guy showed me was if you have y your PlayStation Eye camera. You can literally like take whatever the camera is pointing at, and then that goes into the, like you yeah, can put you make that a, into you make the a game. sticker out of PlayStation Eye. Yeah, yeah and easily. then you can put that anywhere in the. I game. think you can immediately figure out what everyone's saying now. I know what kind of sticker can be in my game. Plants, yep. <sighs> plants, yes. yes, plants, rubber plants. <laughs> Yeah, but it's lots of tropical foliage. So how how far along? So you, you I have only play, that you're I, I played it for about five hours, and uh, two hours were spent playing through the single player story mode because you have to actually. How is that? You have to finish the entire first story mode world before you can do any cu customization yourself, and it's very charming. And there's like a really great narrator who's throughout, and the sense of humor is fantastic. And yeah, I think one of the thing, one, <laughs> one of the things that when when they gave me my demo at E3, they were talking about that it makes a lot of sense is that once you start doing levels is they'll have levels that you can go in and just mess with them you know so right. you could start with like a race and just start altering things in the race to get a feel for how the different things change inside your game design so you don't have to just jump in like a blank slate and try to do a blank because what i want to make you know you can build on th there's three planes there's three horizontal planes and like i want to make like a giant roller coaster kind of thing where like there's two different tracks you know, one in the foreground, one in the background, going different ways, and so it'd be a race between two different characters. And wow. Yeah, it's ambitious, and I probably won't be able to make it for, like, a year. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Shane Benhausen's level coming sometime? In a year. 2009. Yeah. When it's ready. How much when, will you sell it for? When it's done. I don't know. Oh, whoa, hey -o. Yeah, we don't know. All right. Skip Fizzer, what have you been playing? Chime and Shores 2. Ooh. Ooh. What's your favorite mode? Um, Probably pacifism or king. Is pacifism where you have to go through the gates? Yes. That's, that's hard. Different. How does that work? Because we mentioned it on 1FFM but couldn't actually talk about it yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now that it's out, it's um, you can't shoot at all. Okay. And you just have the, the blue guys chasing you. It's awesome. just all blue guys. And then you have to go through the through like the, the barbell gates. They're actually gates. You have to go through the line part of them. If it's, like get, a, it's like a warp, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not like it's a, not a warp. warp. It, it's no, explosion. It's, a, it's like, a, like a skiing thing where you go through. Or a slalom. And yeah, slalom. You try to avoid it, and you try to get through. But the ends of the gates are enemies, and if you hit them, you die. So it's like just massive avoiding everything. And wow. You, I died like it's strangely in the first addictive. 10 seconds in my first game. Like, whoa, this is something completely different that I have to adjust my gameplay for. I'm curious. Do you find the four-player disorienting? I didn't play four-player yet. How big a television have you played it on? Well, it's weird because traditionally I like playing those kinds of games on a small television. Where it, you can take in the whole right, thing. Right, because a big screen is confusing. But with the four-player, small screen is confusing, and I want to play on a big screen so I can concentrate on my quadrant. We went and played it in the demo room where we have, what, what is that thing like about, 50, 60? 50 or 60 inch television? And it was night and day because we had played it before at, at Nick's station where he has like, you know, the, the standard, whatever that, no, those, those aren't even 30. 27 or something. They're 23. They're 23. Right. So we have like our 23 inch widescreen HDs and I'm like, wow, okay, this is really hard. It's disorienting. It's really small. And then we went and played it in there. Right. Totally. Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> oh, I swallowed the sneeze. But I think what I said was correct. <laughs> like, for single player, small screen. For multiplayer, big screen, right? That's it, huh? Yes. Yeah. Big, big screen for four player because there's so much on the screen. I mean, there's so literally... Buy, buy two TVs if you want to <laughs> play this game. Requires <laughs> That's all you need to do. Next gen gaming. Yes. <laughs> it's a good job. It's, it's, you know, it's a downloadable game, so it's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> But and make sure you get it. You save. <laughs> Tell your friends to at least get a 60-inch television to play Geometry Wars 2. I thought it was really, f it was really fun when we played it like that. We played with, uh, I played with Anthony and Nick and Matt Leone, and we had a blast. We had, we had a blast playing it. And have you played the team modes where like one person 
on what you, you have one ship and one person drives and one person shoots. No, it's called co-pilots. That's it's really weird. That's it's pretty crazy. It's not that would cause fights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What it, are you doing? It's sort of it's sort of a novelty <laughs> mode. It's a fun novelty mode for like you know the change of pace. I mean, I don't think you'll want to play it very extremely seriously because, like you said, it'll get you like, why are you driving it that way? Oh, you, why did you hit that guy? I like the. Uh, uh, king or whatever they call it. They the let the lamb grab one? Yeah, one? I like yeah. that. So that here's my really question, cool. though. All these co-op modes sound great. What's the deal with all the co-op being local only? No <laughs> online. I don't know. That seems like a that seems like an issue to me. Maybe we'll be able to purchase that at a later date. I hope <laughs> so. <laughs> really, you hope you can no. purchase it? No, I don't. Have, have any of these kind of games had online multiplayer? No. Did no. Stardust? I don't believe so. It has local. No. no. Stardust is Subspace? Local which I mean, it sort of sort of came to mind. Subspace sort of comes to mind when I'm watching. Geometry it could just be there's so much going. I like on. I like local on. multiplayer, but I, I like when there's online as well. Yeah, it should be online. You're right. <laughs> you just want what you don't have. Yes, yeah. that's right. <laughs> I do like the way the leaderboards are, are upgraded. In this I like game. how they're on the screen. They're on there, yeah. so you always see how bad wow. you are and how close you are to the next. <laughs> it's already become a huge it's, like oh mine's bigger God. than yours. Yeah, I was trying to knock off Nick a couple times last night in a few modes, and I got. One of them, I think. Nice. But then he signed on right as I was signing off, so I'm like, oh shit, there it goes. But he's kind of a savant on that yeah, shit, I too. Know. I just, I took my 30 seconds of, of fame <laughs> with that. <laughs> and like, we're going to get the camera. If you never play it ever again, in. It, which I th did with that the first John That Chowers. moment will be frozen forever the way it was with Mark That's McDonald, right. where, I, you, yeah. where in your head you, you were ahead of him forever. I think I might do that. I'm done with <laughs> Jammer Chores too. <laughs> well, that was you beat the game. I beat the game. Or you could just unplug your internet connection so you can't see that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea as well. I kind of like that one. I kind of like that one Andrew as Fister well. is done with the internet. I have the five highest scores on my machine. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you. All right. John, you play anything else? A weird mishmash of stuff. I did get a copy of Order Up after I after I said last night nice. I wanted to play it. I like that. I started playing a. Uh, it's a on the on the PC. It's a shareware game, and they did an iPhone version called Galcon. I started playing that. What's that? It's if you imagine uh, Risk in Space as an action game. It's Risk probably the best in space way. as an so action game. So it's very. It has the the aesthetic look is kind of like. Um, Defcon and, right. and Geometry Wars to a That's certain nice. extent. And like that immersion look. You have like a number of planets, and planets have ships uh, associated with them, and you have to move a percentage of ships from one planet to another in order to take it over. So it's like a land grab thing, and you send the ships, and then at the same time, the other person's doing that. So it's like playing Risk in real time, where you're sending spaceships out to take over planets, it's and you need to you need to wipe the other. Person but it's more out. fun than just the spreadsheet side of it. Well, it, it's just action. So all you're doing is like, so on the on the on the PC, you're clicking on planets and saying, okay, I want to take fifty percent of the ships from this planet to this planet, and then you is that a and you real time strategic space shooter. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> but it's like that kind of Geometry Wars aesthetic, and right. it's just like very addictive. iPhone, and it's on the iPhone as well. So I got hooked on the shareware version, and then ended up buying the iPhone game, and it's that's cool. And it's it's a nice kind of you can you can play through a level in like a Are you 3G years. iPhone or are you still old? Still iPhone? old so. I went to go buy an iPhone today. There was still a line. I said, fuck you, iPhone line. Isn't that unreal? It's like a month I was now. I was offended. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I'm still playing Civ Rev on DS, so that's not very interesting. Why is it not very interesting? 2K was really well, excited that. about how much we loved Civilization. Last Were they? On the one up, yeah. So, like, I've been, I've been yeah. chatting on Facebook with uh, Jason Bergman, who's the producer, because I, I kind of have some problems oh, no. with I the 360 version. Your, uh, what happened? What I'm, happened? A little, I'm a little irritated with the 360 version because, like, I breezed through the first couple of levels, then I tiled it up to King, and suddenly— per Perhaps you're not a King, Garnet. Have you thought about that? He fucking insinuated that, and I like <laughs> I take offense to that. I take offense to that because I think there's something wrong with the curve when when you know like when there's something wrong with the game because you can't do it. Is that what you're? There's about something to wrong argue? with. The, this I, is, have, I have the same problem with Geometry Wars. This is the <laughs> argument that we had a decade ago about Civ. Why are tanks dying to pikemen? They're That's dumb. They can. They're, they're very crafty. Pikes with explosive tips. They stab the treads. I don't know. <laughs> Why do why do Boom. why do <laughs> why do bombers fall victim to dudes with muskets? 
it's dumb. Like, you know, and, and, and the problem I have with it is, is even if those are just graphical represent, uh, you know, iconic representation of what the troops are in the cities. If I go into an attack, and at the beginning of each attack, it shows you a a numerical representation of your attack value and a numerical representation of the defender's value. If my, you know, if I'm like a 65 or 70, and the defender is a 12, mid 30s or 40s, I expect to win. Sort of. I know exactly what you're talking and about. And I noticed the same thing when I was reviewing it too. All of a sudden, like you get to you turn it on to King and like these guys with like twenty or thirty point lower difference are just beating you yeah, mercilessly. And it totally makes you second guess your military moves. Like yeah. maybe I shouldn't attack this even though the math appears to be on my side. Absolutely, and I don't, I don't get that. And I was looking on the forums, and there's people who are, who are breaking this down now to even analysis of the animations. Really? So evidently, they, there's, a, there's a theory running on the uh, Civ forums that the animations are representative of how the dice rolls are going. So, for instance, if the if the attacking squad moves forward right away, then you automatically have an advantage. And if you stand your ground right away, then it's kind of a stalemate. But if you start to move back at all, you should immediately get out of there because it means you're going to lose. I don't know. I, there's too much random out randomness to it for a game that's that involves so much. I mean, so much of the game is about building up your forces, making sure that you're you know b benefits to how you're developing your technology, right. how you're developing your resource management. If all those things kind of then fall by the wayside because of a couple of dice it's rolls, like a phantom chaos of the battlefield. It's yeah, the, yeah. It's the really chaos exist. theory uh, variable they implemented. In the that game. and never underestimate the experience of a pikeman. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> never underestimate the experience of a pikeman. All right, so there, so there's that. I'm gonna keep playing it some more. You even, it, even soured on it completely? No, no I mean no. it's 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 a nice represent. It's a little bit it's a little bit simplified. I mean, I was thinking about it. I want to go back and put Civ 4 on my computer because I was remembering some of the things about Civilization where like in Civ, when you have you know the area that's being developed around a city, you can apply lots of different upgrades to those patches. So, you know, yeah. you can you can add irrigation, you can add you know roadways, all these different things to increase the production from them. In Revolution, each square produces basically one sort of thing. There's yeah. a few special squares that I, do extras. I had a good time with Revolution, but I think I'm going to go back to 4. Are you going to do it? My main civ, yeah. Have you played the DS one yet? Not yet. You should. I haven't been I've spent all my traveling like in the last 3 weeks, so I'm not going to travel much anymore, but I need to get the DS version, I think. I think I need to get the DS it. version and play with that because I think the DS version would be the right combination of a little Your expectations of of the depth right will go away somewhat just by the nature of the of what you're playing it on. And having it right there handheld it sounds like great because you can yeah. pick it up and play it. The only thing I have is like the game of the week is a really great idea, but this this idea that you can't save the game of the week because somehow that evens the playing field is ridiculous. To those of you that are flashing back to next week, <laughs> to last week. <laughs> did, we, did we go over that yeah, already? Yeah, we had this yeah, exact yeah. conversation. Oh, right, there it is, so. <laughs> it's just dumb. It's just dumb. It's still dumb because game of the week, like, you can replay the game of the week as many times as you want to. The whole thing of Civ is, like, the exploration phase. I thought that would stop him. No. <laughs> pisses me off. No. Totally pisses me off. And then it's finally... It's offended. It really does. Uh, and last but not least, um, I, I promised everyone I would do some closing thoughts on Metal Gear Solid 4 oh because I finished, oh I finished it. I finished it. There's some parts that I think are really awesome. It's not going to be game of the year for me, and I, I'm i not going to incite any more riots. There are some parts that are really cool. There's some really moving parts. Like, Okay, like we give a spoiler alert if you want to turn down your... Um, yeah, let's say in about uh, three minutes. I'll give you three minutes. All right, so I have three minutes. So turn down your radio now or your playback material now. Okay, so anyway... All right, so there we go. The point where you're like going through the microwaves and you're having to actually tap on the triangle button, although it wore on my finger, I, I agree with Andrew. Like that's one of the coolest, like most. You're really getting the whole struggle of this character, really trying to. Meanwhile, you're watching two of the things happening in what's not only the most one of the most interactive cutscenes ever invented. Yeah, but it I, really makes you feel what the characters are feeling. I, yeah, that part was fucking fantastic. That that that, that might have been the pinnacle of the game for me. I mean, really, like that it, was, like, it was something was, that I'd never seen in another game. I've never seen anything Sorry. like that. I was totally drawn in. I was in it. I was like, "Wow, this is really, really, really cool." So yeah, well, which Splinter Cell has a part like that? None. I'm just just curious. What? Come on, like this. Is wow. Because <laughs> a, a, a lot of people are like, "Oh, what does Metal Gear do that's <laughs> new and interesting? It's just like any other stuff that game part, with too many cutscenes." Didn't Garn just say that? It was I'm just awesome and I'm just making sure he thinks it's awesome. Dude, I said it was like you've been, hating, you've been hating this game for Shane, months. Shane, what? you're reminding me. You Shane, hate this game. Shane, you're reminding me of the people of 
the Metal Gear Solid fans online who I fucking hate. Uh, because Garden and I have had so as many soon fights. as somebody says anything remotely negative, they're like, "You hate it. You hate." Well, MPS. he's setting he's setting it up. He's saying the one good thing he likes before he no, not, not, not goes, in, goes well, in for the kill. So the kill would be wh which kill would you like me to use? I bet you don't like the last battle. The oh my god. Why should he? It really, really come on, dude. It's love it or hate it. John's what, taking a nap over what, here. What would you love about it? <laughs> the lights went out. So. I think <laughs> I, I was really impressed by the last battle because they were able to make a cutscene with the kind of fighting you see in those amazing Metal Gear cutscenes where you're actually controlling it for the first time ever. I mean, because I held down L1 and punched a button. What? Oh, oh, a the f the fight. amazing fighting huh. in that last... Oof. Yeah, oh. like, you can do all sorts of different... Barroom cool brawl? <sighs> you might not have been a I think all the different contextual Dude, throws. the bouncer was better than that. No, there's a lot of different contextual no, throws. No, the bouncer was better and, than that, actually. And it's three. there's three different rounds where, where you're doing different things, and it can do different attacks, and it looks really cool. Like, I had no problem with that fight. I didn't die. And you probably liked the wedding as well. It, it was it was funny. <laughs> funny? Uh, yeah, they Come cut. on. Yeah, like, the wedding was funny. There was a lot of funny stuff in that cutscene. On Sunday afternoon, I got to the beginning of the ending cutscene at about 10 minutes till 5, and somewhere around 6.30, it was still going, and I was wondering... Yeah, 30 seconds, Garnet. I was wondering, why am I still sitting here watching it? Couldn't they just... Couldn't, like, it, I understand the fans wanted some of that stuff, but did, fans, did you really need the wedding? Did yes. You, Really? Was, like, the closure you get for every single character. He had so many threads to tie up, and he did it. Andrew? Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Mr. Oh, oh, I totally oh, it's, forgot it's, about it. It's very it's Mr. and Mrs. Very, Smith. Like, that part, like, when they're when they're holding off the uh, the frog uh, war, the frog like, You realize that Johnny Akaba is, is, is the only Three. comic relief in the entire uh, Act 5. Needs it. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> All right, well, welcome back. There you go. Metal but Gear Solid 4. Well, you, you, did, you didn't hate it. I, no, I never. Me. So, to you clarify something. Did you beat it yet? I did. Yeah. I do not hate Metal Gear Solid 4 uh, at all. I have some I have some philosophical disagreements with how it goes together, but I don't hate it at all. There's some parts I think. You know what I really wish? I really wish there was more of where I'm playing the game because I really did enjoy that part. I thought the parts where I was playing the game were really fun. Like, really fun. I really liked them a lot. More of that. Um, and that's that. So if you stick around, when we come back on the other side, we will talk about downloadable games and have they finally arrived. In the meantime, we're going to like crack open uh, Life and Style because Brittany, she's desperate for a real friend. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I'll be your friend, Brittany. Those are delicious. You're actually, the back, it says this is hot corn chip snack. Hot corn chip snacks bringing you today's One Up Yours podcast where we're going to talk about downloadable festival. All right, so, guys, why does Ryan say that this is, like, what his most favorite time in video gaming that he can almost ever remember? And Ryan O'Donnell is, like, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan is, we might disagree about games, but I'll tell you this about Ryan. Ryan has a very cool artistic perspective on video games. So for him to say that means that there is some really high thought level, high creativity level stuff well, coming into download. Specifically, there's Geometry Wars 2 right. and a bunch of really cool artsy fartsy stuff like Braid and Eden. Eden. Pixel Junk Eden. All right, so but it really is becoming, this time, this right now, is the best it's ever been for downloadable games. Okay, so who would have thought 12 months ago even that downloadable content game was going to get to this point already? And this seems to be a very quick acceleration like, of what's happening you know, in like space. When Xbox 360 first came out, what was everybody playing? The Geometry Wars. Right. So I think right then we, we saw the potential for this. And yeah. then with PS3, by the time like Warhawk had come out, we were like, wow, that's that's a whole new can of worms Kay. in terms of downloadable stuff. And then WiiWare, still kind of untested, but people see the potential in it. Well, WiiWare. Just this last, uh, what, last week or two weeks ago, we had uh, Siren for the PS3 as well. Yeah, another real game. Which is another, like, you know, full retail game experience. Yeah. Well, like, right now we have Pixel Junk Eden, Geometry Wars 2, Siren, and 1942 in the last week, you know? That's so a lot, that's so a lot of good are, games. What are the best games out there right now? Well, on I, think, I think those four are the new best games. 1942 is really cool because it's not just 1942. It's a new game. Ha, who's checked it out? I, played it, played I, it. I actually yeah. played some this week as well. And what did you think? I really, really liked it. I mean, it, I, I used to play 1942 in the uh, the arcades all the time. Absolutely. And it, it totally brought me back to that, but at the same time, it feels new. Were you thinking, wow, I, I'd like wonder that what they could do with Xevious? Because that was one of the things I thought. I was like, wow, would you maybe re yeah. reimagine Xevious? Well, that's a different publisher. That whole school I know, I'm just thought. saying different. Oh. 
is really awesome with Pac-Man and Galaga and 1942. Like, take the old one. Yep. And don't just port it with new graphics, but rethink yeah. it. See also by the Commander Rearm. Yeah, yeah, we really have Capcom is, is pushing this a lot lately. And I love it. I love that they're doing that. Yeah, it's a great combination there for Capcom. And because they Galaga, have which is what, next week? Na yeah, Namco. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Is that's no, next it's, week? I think it might be yeah. two weeks. Two weeks. Actually, very August, soon. August, very soon. August is an amazing time. one of time. the big five games. From yeah, August is great for Xbox Live Arcade and for PSN. Yeah. yeah. A lot of good stuff. On both. Like they just announced Ratchet and Clank. Um, the quest for booty is August twenty first for fourteen ninety nine. I hadn't heard that. That's awesome. We have two sort of ph philosophies here, right? And, and I think one of the things we have to bring up in just a moment is we have to bring up how much the new Xbox community content is going to change. The, the Xbox. X XNA stuff. The XNA stuff. I think that's going to be a big change for. You think for this the year? I think it's next. No, year. I next think year. that'll be the next stage of it. It's this fall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but I think when it the critical mass yeah. is going to come, I think there'll be some interesting curios. This I mean, year, but outside of dishwasher, ninja, ninja, di ninja yeah. dishwasher. Outside of that, do you really think we'll be seeing a lot of XNA stuff that's great this year? It's the same thing that we're getting the the bumper crop of like the good stuff now. Right. We'll have to wait another yeah. year. I for think the, the XNA fruits. The interesting thing sure. that's going to happen with it though is that regardless of whether or not we're seeing a lot of good stuff right away, I think it's going to open up a lot more downloadable games coming out because mm. it's not just going to be the one release a week. But however, that we get from isn't, XBLA. isn't the quantity versus quality the problem that's already kind of facing XBLA with the delisting of games? And like, is the, X, the torrent of XNA garbage a potential problem? I, I it, it's possible, but I think that what it means is that downloadable games are going to become a lot more serious because I mean, if you look on on retail games, it's the same thing. There there are a lot of games that are trash. That's going to happen as downloadable games become a more serious business. So well, I don't know whether it'll happen, but I think one of the things that could be a tremendous impact of community games in XNA space is that it could create this noise level, you know, this mm -hmm. like kind of fog that pushes anybody who wants to be a professional developer and create a I'm going to sell this game on Xbox Live Arcade to drive forward and actually rise above ab above that static level like yeah. you know here's what the community guys can create y you know what your game actually not better than the community game there's no reason i'm going to spend 800 points on it i'd rather support community guys so it's going to push the 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 mid-level publisher or the mid-level studio who's doing an xna game or i'm sorry who's doing an xbox live arcade game as a professional to do a higher caliber product the other interesting part about xna is that it is going to be open for like publishers or developers who've done xbla stuff yep. they can move over and do XNA stuff if they want, not have to go through Microsoft they so absolutely much. Can. So it's going to be really interesting to see who chooses to do that. And like, the do I even want to deal with the? Do I even want to deal with the Xbox Live Arcade um, process, or do I want to just go through XNA? The peer review system is going to be very interesting. I mean, I think that's like you talked about development. Actually, I think that at the at the onset of community games, there will be quite a few titles because they've already had, um, I believe the number that Chris said was something like 60 titles through the beta program. 60 titles is a lot of content. Okay, that's a lot of content right there to start with. And I think that what you'll see is it'll mature to help weed out that static as time goes on because they're part of their review process is that they'll have a grading system for the for so if you're a member of the what's the gold tier so to speak of that there's a you know, like creators club the creators yeah, club right. right so if you're a member of the creators club you'll be able to be part of the peer review system and as you start reviewing games then your um, your skills in assessing that content will be graded so if you so Shane let's say you become you know a well respected member of that club and people say you know if Shane says this is good it's really good then it may only take like a vote of one or two people of your caliber to approve a game to go out for sale. I'm still concerned about But if I'm not any well, good at it. So they've recreated Dig. They've, they've <laughs> they have. Or yeah. They have. <laughs> but like, I think XNA. But that's stuff, cool. Isn't that. Wait. wait. I think it is cool. But I think that's really I, good. I, I don't think it's going to mature this fall. I no. really don't. I mean, you saw the thing. I think they, like, you saw the six examples they put out with, like, Jelly Car. And, like, yeah. would you really spend money for any of those games? Like, like really. I mean, really. Like, was Samurai want, Dishwasher I, in that okay, that, that was the That was the one that won the award. So it's kind of yeah, on its own tier. That one is really good. And I will, I'll buy that game. But it's but the same thing that Geometry Wars was the very first right. one. Right. I, I, I worry that if 60 games, how many of those 60 games are worth the money? I don't know. We'll see. But, like, if it's a sudden torrent, like, oh, this week 10 new XNA things are out. Like, but you know what? The sifting one thing, sifting the through other that thing, will be difficult. Sort of adding on to that, <clears> the problem that I saw when they announced um, the pricing thing was there are only these three price tiers that XNA games can be. I was really hoping that Microsoft would open it up a little more and let people choose what kind are of the three tiers? what price they want to do. 200, uh, 400, 800. 200 yeah. is cheap for them. That's like yeah. four bucks, right? 200, 400, 800. But I just, like, I wish, like, there's some games that maybe I would pay, like, 99 cents for, but I'm not going to pay four bucks for. Right. Why not open it up so that developers you can want, choose You want the more. Xbox Live Community dollar store. 
Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I do think it's definitely an exciting thing moving forward. But I don't think this fall it's really going to be a big issue. You get a 12 pack of uh, pencil eraser tops. But I will say, coming out of E3, I'm not. I'm not the only person who felt this way. Like coming out of this E3, I find that I'm interested in like quadruple A sixty dollar releases for platforms really? and the PSN and XBLA stuff. Like the idea. Not in between. No, like because I see all these shitty games that are coming out for sixty bucks. I'm like, I would never spend sixty bucks in a million years for your shitty game third party. Like. Hmm. I see it going this way. Like, because the problem with you have a shitty game for sixty bucks, you're trying to convince retailers to buy it. You're trying to sell it to people in whatever way you can. Like, I think years from now, the really big games are going to be in stores, and, and everything else, everything I, else I is going to be digital distribution. I can kind of see that digital, too. Yeah, absolutely. Like, how many games do we see at E3? You're like, this shouldn't exist. At least it's a sixty dollar retail game. A lot. But you a would, lot. But if it was fifteen bucks to download, you'd consider it. Right. Or maybe they should have scaled back their plan originally and like. Yeah, like not spend so much money to have to make so much money. You know, yeah. I, I think the whole enterprise is changing because of digital distribution. Well, I, I, so to to that point, I think that the plan with Ratchet is really cool. I mean, I I think that we've talked about that before on the show already since from our E3 coverage. But I think it's really intelligent way to approach it. You know, here you're bringing a product that episodic length, very fun to sit down and play. You get to play with a new mechanic. It, it has real quality levels. Fifteen bucks is a lot for episodic length. Fifteen bucks is, is uh, it? No, I don't know. but it's sta- but it's standalone. Yeah, one of the Sam and Max episodes ten. There is something like that, but uh, but I mean, it depends sort of on the length, and also like the Sam and Max episode is going to be a really short adventure game, whereas this is this is more. There's more to this than just like yeah. an adventure, like I mean, point and click. Adventure. I, I think to count a chapter of Sam and Max, which I've seen, versus this new Ratchet and Clank level pack with the new weapons, and it has a new weapon, right? It has a new weapon and a mechanic. Yeah, like it's that's not on a scale the same thing. It's at not. All. It's it's, no. it's a it's a substantial. So yes. it's episodic, but. And it has ne- it's a next gen game Big as well, you know, like mm-hmm. it has good graphics. I would like to see I would like to see the PSN network up, uh, apply something sort of like the Creators Club because I think that is really cool. I mean, I think it's gonna be interesting to see not only the for pay stuff but also the stuff that's coming out of the universities. I mean, how cool would it be for someone like SMU's Guildhall to have the final exam for a class be create create a XNA game? put it up on arcade and you know what your score is going to be on a curve based on how many people download your game i mean somebody said there that they're, would be really cool they're focusing on quanti- quality over quantity all they along are. but i mean you know a game like everyday shooter was one dude and like you know that they're a little more less draconian about who can publish a game but I, I think i think if you compare the the two i mean like i love xbla but if you look at what psn has to offer it's a lot less but there are not nearly as many just crap random games. Well, so yeah, you know, I have this list here, and then like it's a pretty solid. Well, before list. you go to that, before you go, I'm I mean, saying it's a solid list with similar amount of titles for all three. Actually. I did. I didn't go into what you. I didn't bring it up in what you've been playing because I thought that it would be ent- more interesting as a point here. I mean, uh, to talk about the noise, Housemark, who are doing you know Super Stardust for P- which, which I'm excited about. They also did Golf Tee It Up for Xbox Live Arcade. And I'm gonna tell you, not only is it a a shameless Hot Shots golf takeoff. It's a, it's a proficient g- Hot Shot, isn't it? I like that. It looked proficient to me. It's a relatively proficient takeoff of Hot Shots golf, but it's two courses, and well, it's, it's also it's also like a third the price of Hot Shots golf. For you know PS3. what? It's really flat. I have to say, it's really, really? flat. Right. I, was, I just it wasn't. It you know what? On top of everything else, there's something. It's very if you're gonna go down that character driven role, right? That character driven road. And have that, you know, we're gonna we're gonna appeal to you with personality, and and we're gonna get you like engaged with that sort of character-driven stuff. It's got to be better than that. It just wasn't. It, it did not click for me. Well, they are from Scandinavia, and it's kind of so. It kind of becomes part of that. <laughs> it becomes part of that class of. They don't play golf. <laughs> it becomes part of that class of games that I think that the community games could really challenge and say, hey, you better step up your game. I want a mini golf game, XNA kids, get to work. I want to throw in too, like uh, going back to Ratchet quick. With the PSN stuff, I mean, Sony said at their press conference that this Ratchet and Clank, you know, little downloadable mini adventure is the first thing they're going to do. They're going to do this for other franchises. Yeah. And when I interviewed them, I, I talked to them a little about that. And, like, I would love to see something like this for, you know, like Uncharted or, you know, a Resistance mini adventure. Like, I think Uncharted, it would be perfect for that kind of game. So yeah. it, it's going to be really interesting to see Sony develop this thing of, like, let's release AAA retail games but then also let's do downloadable mini standalone mini adventures in that same universe with those same characters with the same so type invested, of gameplay so much in the engine and the worlds that they've built that to be able to you know to repurpose well, that. and it's, it's like a good, siren it's a good yeah. way well yeah sirens interesting. And it's a good way to keep people interested between releases well, and if i say in this future landscape of quadruple a games and downloadable games you can give a slice of your expensive game like, yeah. like oh, i can get to quadruple yeah. The, no more triple A's. Uh, it's, it's all about quadruple A's now. Quadruple A's. Yeah. I want to see the quintuple A. 
wait, wait a few years. So it, let me ask you a question. How close is what we're talking about to a first step towards episodic gaming really working? Because if we're talking about, what we're talking about is these chunks of games. It's, it it's would almost, be parts of series. Like I said, it's almost like this middle step between episodic gaming because it's like... It does seem like that. It's like these little things that just keep you interested in the franchise between the major releases, but it's not quite something that I would... Like, I don't expect a new Ratchet & Clank mini game to come out every, you know, every two or three or four months. I think until a major franchise gets announced as an episodic downloadable game, which hasn't really happened yet. I mean, we, no. have, we have things uh, like the... Like the uh, <laughs> the uh, it hasn't worked, but it has. That doesn't count. Half Life, they're taking them a year and a half to put each one yeah, out. That's, yeah. that's the problem. So with Half Life, it's yeah, kind of failed. Absolutely. But like the the uh, Home Star Runner, Strong Bad Games coming for Wii. It's it's episodic and that has a fan base. We'll see how it does. Like I think it's it's a good test market for that. You know. Well, I mean, those guys have already done Sam and Max, and then right. there's there's the Penny Arcade game that's supposedly going to be and also the same. Episodic. Telltale guys are also doing Wallace and Gromit. Got announced at Comic Con. They've been successful so far with that in the adventure game spectrum. But I mean, right. I think what you guys are talking about is more of what we think of a traditional game. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about ad adventure it's games, very action different. games, shooter yeah. games. But well, it's writing based, it's quicker. Yeah. Right. Okay, I mean, I buy that. Like SOCOM is probably SOCOM and Wipeout are two of the biggest franchises that are being given the deal treatment and we'll see how they do. I mean, I'm pretty excited for both of those. And I think neither of those even need to be considered as episodic. I mean, those yeah. are the kind of games that you could almost form a sort of uh iTunes like experience around, right? Where you like you have here's here's the framework of the game and we're gonna keep giving more content. New levels, well, new weapons. Are perfect for that. They just keep plugging tracks and ships into it. That's what Burnout and Warhawk are doing. Yeah. But the, but they haven't been doing it that effectively, have they? Uh, I mean, Warhawk, I, I, had, Warhawk had Warhawk two, two packs, the, you know? and the burnout downloads are awesome. They are, but they keep, they're, they're, so there've been some delays. What's the, what's the story filled with the delays on the on the burnout on the Cagney? I just know that they've gotten delayed. <laughs> I don't know what the know, story know, is behind the it. One up news failed. Well, I know the 361's delayed even more, but they're both delayed. Yeah, that's what I heard. All right, so they I know that I bought dur burnout recently. Because I'm excited I'm about this. Back on it this week. You should be playing Burnout. Burnout so is pretty freaking awesome. Uh, back to the downloadable games. Back to the downloadable games. <laughs> All right. So, like, you, you brought this list. Brought a list. Give us some of the best of the best. Well, what's, what I find really exciting are the games that are across all three, and that's still really rare. Mega Man 9 is like the test market case for that, and I think it's going to be really huge on all of them. Everyone loves Mega Man. So, so like, right there, you bring up an interesting yeah. point. Does the nature, does the very nature of these downloadable games turn them into the next generation of console exclusives? Well, it doesn't seem like it. I mean, for first party stuff, definitely, but uh, I, I think moving forward, it would behoove people to try to put them across all of them. Right. You know? But th but again, doesn't this bring in like the nature of how difficult it is across the different architectures? I mean, if the console architectures themselves are that much different, how much more variation does that bring into the programming equation to have to also go, okay, well, on this game, I have to make the PSN network work, but I have to make the live network work, and I also have to make the WiiWare <laughs> network work. It's true. But I feel like Sony is doing a good thing by like allowing Microsoft, allowing like Mega Man Nine to be on that and, mm -hmm. and on Wii, but have stuff like SOCOM and Wipeout that's very PS3 centric. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel like my, uh, Microsoft needs to have more like big first party, pretty looking Xbox Live Arcade games. They haven't really yeah. done that yet. But I think if they did like a Halo game down the road, like it doesn't have to be like a serious Halo game, but like Halo. It baby, could kind of replace you know? the the notion of demos. These little yeah. slides. This, instead oh, of doing a, a demo, yeah. can you imagine if they did a um, an Alan Wake? teaser Maybe. episode or something Huge. right now Huge. Teasers, seriously exactly. that would be perfect for it or heavy rain right dude i would and yeah. meanwhile, jump all meanwhile over that. nintendo is like backing off of WiiWare. they barely publish anything there's like a pokemon farm and there's dr mario it's like cuz it, the minute nintendo decides to release a real anything on WiiWare, it'll be well, colossal I, I bet they're waiting for their storage solution to work out there's that and there's also an, i think the market that they're chasing is there's there's got to be some concern that well, these people probably don't understand that this is even here, you know? Yeah. The bulk of the people that they've marketed the Wii to are not going to go well, po poking around in the channels and say, that's why. oh, I can download an independently made yeah. unique thing. But that's why I think um, what Shane's talking about, like their WiiWare stuff could be some of their stuff that appeals more to the hardcore people. Like, yeah. what if they did do, like we talked about before E3, if they announced, like, a new Super Mario game or a new Metroid game. Or Kid Icarus. Or Kid Icarus <laughs> for WiiWare. <laughs> And like a more old school, like 2D style, the hardcore fans would love. Like that. if they announce a new they 2D, would. like Super Metroid 2, could you even imagine? I, I mean, like, yeah. please. Up, I'd even, my... I'd even go for them doing new Super Mario Brothers on Wii with a, you few, know? Yeah. a few new things. Yeah. Because you know? right now the biggest WiiWare game that's slated is Tetris Party, which more, more details came out this week. And you kind of laugh, but Tetris DS has been out of print for two years and it goes for like seventy dollars on eBay. Doesn't Tetris really? Party use the balance board? Tetris Party uses the balance. 
board. It has like all these crazy modes. It has a balance board mode where you use the balance board to control the pieces. It has a co-op mode. Has uses Mii's. It's online uh, play. Uh, Tetris Party you, you is go going... Go no further. I'm sold. Tetris Party <laughs> is going to be huge. And Bomberman, also from Hudson, is going to be huge. They're both coming out this fall. Does like, Bomberman use the balance board as well? I haven't said yet. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everything. I mean, some interview like balance board. Running, running on the balance board. Like, <laughs> like, I don't even know how. I guess you'd like lean with the Tetris pieces. I, I want to try that. That sounds I'm, fun, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm down with that. You jump up and down. Bring to, it. Flip them. I don't know. John's <laughs> practicing it now. I am. But yeah, <laughs> I feel like Nintendo is purposefully like, hey, I even heard this, that at the launch they like distance themselves because so, they wanted to, like third parties to feel like oh this is your your place we wear but I think Nintendo needs to go really? back and own Nintendo it. Nintendo saying they we, do. We carved out this nice little dark ghetto for you that <laughs> no one really understands. You go have fun they, in it. They do need the storage solution though. Like let's be honest, yeah. they need that. The fridge now. The fridge is full. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's not even a let's be honest. That's just that's just straight up factual. They need like, a storage solution. Yeah, we're talking things that need improvement. That's number one. Okay. If if we wants to compete in downloadable, it needs storage solution. Yeah. It, like as soon as possible. What about what about interfaces then? How important is it, is it to have a very usable interface? I mean, it's easy to get into, good store, good storage I, solution. Good I think that's really important too, and that's the problem that uh, Microsoft is having. They, the reason they keep having to reinvent that their store. They're saying like, oh, we don't know how to. Like we, the current thing that we have doesn't present people with enough. Like it doesn't present people with an easy way to access the content. Like they admitted that the reason that they're doing the whole new interface is, or one of the reasons is that they need a better way to present people with right. the content. That's why they have to start delisting games too. I think they need to get out in front of that. Like I think they need to get very far out in front of that and really bring that new interface out to people in more than just like we're going to show it off in the press conference and bring it out to like you know to you got John. Okay, th this is an interesting spot. I think that you have a particularly unique position in that you reach a more casual audience, you know, and mm -hmm. it's very much the sort of audience that they want to well, broaden. I talk to the audience that they desperately want to right. speak to with this new, th what they call it, NXE is the... You guys should have this right now. You should have live, or at the very least, you should have them coming down and spending a couple of days with you playing around with it so you can really you get would, into it. You would think that. I'm <laughs> just saying. I hear you can download I'm a, saying that's a what leaked, pirated, unfinished <laughs> version of it. Yeah, there was something, yeah, there, and there was <laughs> some YouTube true. video up this week of people having... And we should be playing with it as well, you know, as the enthusiast crowd. We should yeah, be I was going to say, I, I would like to play with it. I think Edge got to play with it. Have you seen the new cover? No, I haven't. It's all about avatars. I anyway. Let my edge subscription lapse, but that's a whole that's a whole other subject for a different day. <laughs> I, I think that's I think that's really important. I think then it you know, so we've kinda knocked on them a little bit and I'm interested to see what's gonna happen, you know. Anecdotal evidence from Major Nelson is is funny to joke about, but it doesn't mean anything. I mean, we know those guys. Of course, they're going to say it looks good. That's that's their baby. It's like again, it is like us saying one up looks great. I think you, it's going to be interesting to see how I well think, that works I think, out. I mean, they're heading in the right direction. I think if they get it right, it will eliminate the need to delist. Yeah, because the UI, be the, and the, the we, UI we can go that, on forever. Yeah, we asked that at, at E3. You know, with this new implementation, will you be able to not delist the titles? And they kind of like skirted around it and were like, well, you know, just notice that we haven't delisted anything yet. It cool. appears like, okay. to have a lot in common with the Apple TV interface. That's which what I was going to ask. Who has this down right correctly? Apple TV is the best I've seen, but it's not perfect. Okay. What do you guys think about PSN? Like, since they did this store revamp. It's, be it's better. Really it's better. Liked the new, I really like the new store. I still do have a little trouble finding stuff. But for these but things I like to it. really work, because of the nature of the UI, it's got to be the the sort of opening screen has got to be, here are the most popular things, and here are the staff picks or whatever yeah. they want to call right. it. They, they have to anticipate. There has Here's to be what you're probably looking for right now. Yeah, and demos are that's the hold demos on. are essential. Before also. you get away from that, I think you just nailed it. Absolutely. Here's what you're probably looking for right now, and I think that's really key because I I do agree. I think the PSN store looks better now. But I think that it doesn't have the scalability down any better than yeah. than the Xbox Store does because it, if it had the same quantity of product in it right now, it would have numerous boxes and tabs, and it would be the well, same the, situation. Yeah, because the disadvantage that the game stuff has that 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 say iTunes and Apple TV doesn't go up against is that when you're looking for an album or a movie, there's a pretty good chance you already know what it is. Whereas right. PSN particularly is all about discovery. Like, right. you know, if I just bought a PS3 and I have no context of the Pixel Junk brand, well, how am I going to learn right. that anything right. with Pixel Junk is cool? Well, precisely. My sister calls and she's like, are there any new PS3 games I should care about? I'm like, actually, I think you'll like Pixel Junk Eden. Go online and download the demo. I'm so happy there's a demo. Right. And she likes it. But like, if there hadn't been a demo, she would never have bought that because Pixel Junk. So it would be that, great you know? if they brought in, like, if you like this, you'll probably like one, two, three. The way Amazon does it. Also, you know? can we add a search bar? 
perhaps. Uh, that, that, that would be very <laughs> what helpful. Do you, what do you mean, a search bar? I don't understand. Can you explain sure what you mean? It'll be at least as effective as the one-up search bar. <laughs> awesome. Dude, actually, probably way more effective <laughs> just on the first iteration. I'm just saying, I, I think they said that they're not putting that into the new uh, 360 revamp, and that seems totally insane to me. What do you suppose the methodology is behind that? It Why? probably breaks everything. I don't know. I'd set no up with something like the TiVo search, where you start typing from a yeah, grid on the exactly. left, auto and it starts shortening the and it starts shortening the list on the right. Even that would be fine. That you would know, this is part good. of a problem that like I, I've seen also translated into the way we look at video game criticism content on the net. Is there's just nobody. Uh, it, it seems to be aware of the whole movement of even Web 2.0. I mean, maybe even Web 1.5. There's not a good acknowledgement of what's going on in community, what people are looking for, bringing that kind of content to the top and not having to like just wade through this miasma of all this stuff. Oh, I want to. All I want to do is I want to find out what's new. And isn't that what Sony's trying to do with Core? That show. <laughs> I mean, you have to for pay for that. Yeah, you mean, you mean, you mean, you mean Underground free. 2? Yeah. I'm, I'm not convinced. That's not what Cole is doing. Yeah, I'm not convinced. I wonder, you know, when Home is actually up and running, that is a really good potential to market these games to people. I'm sorry, I didn't realize we were smoking right now. Oh. <laughs> well, and you saw today the Namco Museum thing with Home, right? You mm -hmm. see that? That's kind of a big deal. It's like, presumably, you can purchase these arcade units of the Namco games and put them in your house. I mean, that's, it's moving towards a new DLC paradigm we haven't seen before. Yeah. I sort of feel like there's a, a discurrent in Sony between the group that wants to make PlayStation Network functional as a gaming tool, and then the group that's still like set on Let's Make Home. Well, it's like two little nebulous globes that yes. eventually you're going to intersect in a beautiful Venn diagram. But yeah, this, whole, this whole thing... Or whole. Exactly. But, but really the I'm whole, not sure which one's going to happen. The whole downloadable games world is very new, and we're kind of figuring it out. And like Nintendo... No one's here talking about the WiiWare interface because has anybody even l looked at it here? Like, really? Uh, I have. Cause I, okay, well, there, so what about it? So is, Only it once. is it good? It's the virtual console That's interface. It, it yeah. looks just like that. Oh, and yeah. it's it's white boxes. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm still waiting for a WiiWare. I don't think it's any better than I'm than still waiting for a WiiWare game that I want to buy. Yeah, I mean, you I... You want to play, what's it called? What's the big one? Crystal Chronicles? No, no. Tail, no. What's oh, it uh, that, that would be uh, d -d 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 Lost Winds. Lost Winds. I played it here, and it's overrated. Really? Yeah. Because everyone's like, "That's the one." Is that people clinging to? There is one. It's 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 pretty it's pretty good, but it's overpriced. And uh, cur the Kirby uh, where you draw on DS is better. Canvas first. Yeah, better. You know what? The, the 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 also the the other interesting culture that's very quickly growing on the other side of this is the iPhone. And you right. see a lot well, of this you want, sort of If you want an indication of how X and A is going to go, just look at the iPhone. It's a bunch of garbage. There are 250 games on iPhone right now, and there's about four worth playing. Is there All right, so system? there went there were my point. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. It's fantastic to have you. Thank you. Is there a good system in place for that? the good stuff to float to the top, or do you have to know what you're looking for? It's like all – um, they do what's out, they do staff picks, and then you rate it. Are the yeah, staff, I was going to say the staff picks, mm -hmm. like – are the staff picks good? They're usually all right. That's how I found Galcon. If the ratings work like rating podcasts on iTunes, then that's it's the probably exact good. It's the exact same so system. Like that system seems to work. So well. the lion's share have really negative reviews, then. Yeah, the games, the the very best games, the ones that under normal circumstances you would think, oh, it's going to get uh, very few things have a five out of five, because a lot of people bring it down. So you know, something like EA's Scrabble, which is one of the most sort of feature complete, well put together, well implemented, works well on a phone, is getting it like a three and a half or something. I can't believe well, like that. I heard Monkey Ball was pretty high up. There. Have you been to Yelp before? Oh, Yelp it's is the same way. It's, you know, the, well, that's the, that's the downside of, of relying entirely on the community because I think these are spite comes in. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> they're great discovery tools. They're not great. They're great not. You know, you can't, you can't go into these things and go, I am just going to go and look for the top ranked things because it's there's always some dick that went in and gave it a one because he didn't like it. Which is why we should be excited about it. I mean, they're great discovery tools, so they'll bring people to stuff. And then folks like us who, I mean, it's, these are not remotely like threatening us as critics of, of what we do because we're spending a lot of time looking at all this stuff. And there's people who want to hear our opinions, and that's why they're still going to come back to listen to this show or, or read what we're writing or go to John's site well, or any of those things. And I think ultimately this is a great way for creative, weird games to reach an audience they wouldn't have reached otherwise, like a game, yes. like, a game like Flower on PSN, oh. or a game like Braid or Fez. Braid on, looks so good. Or Fez it? on XBLA. These are games that would probably be in a bargain bin if they were on a disc, but they could end up being huge sellers on. All right. So, I, what would we recommend to people to go out and, and look at right now? That's available. Or it's coming out this fall. Coming, right, coming right now, out. or coming out in the next. You know, well, we, all, we all saw one 
Did you see it today as well? Yeah. Uh, Kingdom of the... Kingdom what? for Keflings? For Keflings. What's Very that? bizarre name. I miss this. It it's the new game from Ninja Bee, who've done a lot well, of this is what you guys games. saw. Yeah, yeah. so they, they, they visited both of us today. and uh, They did Kaloki X. With they them. did Kaloki X, and they did... Um, Cl it was Cloning Cl Clyde, Clyde, which I would recommend, by the way, if anybody hasn't checked that out, I, I would say go check that I out. I heard their best I game was really like Cloning Clyde. That's what I heard their best game was. It's their, is it's their well. fourth XBLA game, and it has a very um, 90s, early li late bullfrog, early lion head kind of vibe to it. It's a non non confrontational, um, real time um, resource management sort of city building yeah, game. It's a little bit like black and white. A little I bit mean, like black and white, but with no, there's no combat at all. Yeah. So it's just building things and setting stuff up with the with the with the the inhabitants. So you're a giant. So um, instead of you pointing and clicking with a mouse cursor, you have a, a giant character who plods around the environment and he picks people up, and he sticks a hat on them, and the hat tells them what their job is. So it's like you are a miner, so he pops a mining hat on them, and then they get on with the job. So it's it's putting a character into the environment, but it's all about. You open up the 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 real mechanic is there's a quite a complex tech tree, which is blueprints for different kinds of buildings, and the buildings allow you to then start taking advantage of the environment in different ways. So you open a workshop and you can build things, and the things you build in the workshop allow you to create another building, which sort of refines. So you start off with stone and wood as resources, and as you build more things, you build houses and and workshops that can build more refined things until eventually you have a, a sort of ecosystem of so stuff it's That's a little bit neat. it's a little bit like like an animal crossing or a flow or a flower where there's not it's a game where there's not really any conflict right you're just kind of able to do what you want and, and there's and there's co-op online co-op as well which i thought was really interesting yeah. so you can the two of you can be wandering around the city well and it's fully and drop in drop out yeah. with no problems which and is cool. there's an emergent gameplay esque factor to it because there's things you can do in the environment so you can say oh i'm gonna go like you know paint all the buildings so you can create a game where it's like all right we're gonna i'm gonna paint everything red and you're gonna paint everything blue and we can you know so there's there's things you can do within the freedom that it sets also up some creativity element yeah. but at no point are your little guys fighting each other or it's all about resource management and it, it in a lot of ways it reminds me of the kind of thinking that was behind black and white but more populous and and that era of games where it was just let you know, you know, Populous had to be Peter's favorite game. Yeah, right? I'm sure he always just, wanted to make the next one. You're just sort of futzing with it, and I, they came in. I was like, okay, what's this? I don't really know. And I sat, and it like grabbed me in like 30 yeah. seconds. I mean, it, it's really charming. And again, it's something that that you're getting on XBLA that certainly in the PS1 generation, and in, uh, I would think in the first half of the PS2 generation, it would have been a forty dollar game. But the fact that it's they like, can't announce the price, but I would imagine it's going to be a ten fifteen dollar game, yeah. and it's like to it's take fantastic. the chance to once again plug One Up FM. We interviewed those guys <laughs> today, and not for this Monday show, but next Monday show we'll run that. Yeah, cool. You know, Chris Satchel when I was interviewing beat around the bush a lot, but I mean, something that comes to mind to mind for me is that these these sort of titles, and this is sort of the another part of the iPhone experience, is that they're really really well suited to putting onto a handheld device. Mm -hmm. There's been lots of rumors for a long time about a Microsoft gaming device. What if it was a a Zune um, sort of XBLA, XNA subscription-based sort of I'd model? Say, I'd say good luck with that in the world of iPhone. No, I, um, I, think what's, I think what's more likely to happen is, so to get sort of a little nerdy for a while, Adobe just dropped the license fee structure on Flash. So no one ha you don't have to pay a license to build a Flash thing, and this is why we weren't getting Flash on a lot of phones. Right. It's why, you know, a lot of sites are, were setting, you know, it, it, these hubs where you know they ha they hold the license and then you publish to it. But the fact that it's now going to be a publishing platform and technically it will run on everything. There is there is hardly anything out there right now that can't run Flash. So if you say okay, we're going to build this game on the Flash on the Flash back end, and then it will work on your iPhone or iPhone clone, and it will run on a 360, they and might it will also run do it, on... They might also do it in Air. I had a really interesting interview with Mike Brown, who's the Adobe Air an, uh, evangelist. He was up here a couple weekends ago when we did it for DLTV, and he's talking about having Air run on Nokia phones already, and then like maybe one step away from having it run on and everything this is, else. This is where what you were talking about earlier on is it, it's going to kick in, where ultimate, a lot of things are moving towards, ultimately, the hardware is sort of irrelevant. You know, it's like it's powerful enough to run the engine, 
and the creators are making the software. I mean, we we talked to the guys at Cartoon Network this week, and they have a Flash game creator for Ben 10, the cartoon they have, which is huge. They launched ben it. 10. They launched it in May. There are currently over two million user-generated games. Wow. Two months, That's million crazy. a month they're averaging. Whoa. Wow. And some of them are pretty good. I mean, they're at least you know. You know, people are going back and recreating gameplay types from NES and Super NES era game using Ben 10, and it's it, the graphics are kind of you you grab you grab sprites and background things, and you can create platform games or fighting games or shooters or whatever. There's just too many and variables here because I'm like, now you're talking about that, and suddenly I'm drawn right back to you to Shane talking about Little Big Planet. Right, and I'm thinking, how well, crazy is it going to be to throw this weird back into this yeah. mix of like simpler, cheaper? ubiquitous games that are a lot like the games that we grew up with are are sure. now kind of the baseline that are that a lot of, and it's you know but john there was tremendous backlash when we talked about it like like sh uh well, phil and i had a story on the news blog about how there was you know rumors coming out of europe or uh, you know basically the, the president of SCEE -E -E said that there would be you know potential down the road for you know for pay creative content in Little Big Planet. What if you could pay 99 cents? You, you buy Little Big Planet as the framework and then you could buy these incredible 99 cent games done by real, you know, legitimate creative talent. It's done the right way. I think it's the direction it's going to go, but I think the other the, the flip side of that is provide simple tools so that people like this Ben. I mean, this Ben 10 thing is super simple, but it's the start of something that's going in that direction. It's like, well, we're going to give you something that'll run on any browser on anything and we'll give you a bunch of things to drop into the world. And you can set up the rules, and you know, and there are so many pieces of that out there. I mean, the amount of time you spent last night getting hats right. for your character in Soul Calibur, and yeah. you know, I mean, all of this is indicative of where where it's going and how people consume video games is changing the same way that how people consume television and music has completely changed yeah. in, the in the last five years. And if you really think you're going to be going to EB Games to purchase your limited edition Gears of War with a chainsaw, you're not going to be. You're going to be downloading it in ten years. You really are. Well, the, the other part of this is how will the I get my chainsaw if I'm downloading? Sorry, EA, no chainsaw. EA Sports. I mean, we, we Home actually Depot. there was something that we <laughs> called like about a year ago. In fact, it might even have been when Luke was still on the show when we said what if Madden goes subscription they talked about oh it this yeah. week they did yeah. that's the same thing again you're down you're buying it's the happened. you're buying the engine and then downloading the pieces and it's like this is how this is how it's going to start and this is that's the true episodic gaming it's you're not buying it in chapters you're buying pieces of a whole so in the long run <coughs> they didn't charge you 60 bucks for a disc they charged you 120 dollars to play it for as long as you want Grand to play Turismo it. prologue says hello exactly <coughs> now i can watch top gear on gt prologue all right and if you stick around you can listen to us doing the news while we're going to take a little break and we're going to find out about the 90 news summer buys from only four dollars from lifestyle weekly you can take a little break we'll be right back with the news any chips left back and ready to find out why the stars sparkle in sequins in this week in fashion. Oh, wait, that's still weekly <laughs> life and style in Korean courtships. Folks, we, this is a news segment, and I am so glad to have Phil back because the good news about Phil reading the news is I can snipe and he can read. Garnet's checking out. He's young, <laughs> he's young and fast. Go. All right, I'll go. Okay, we're starting this week with the big news about Activision dropping a bunch of games. GameSpot reports that an Activision representative has confirmed the only Vivendi the titles they're going to pick up from their merger is uh, they're going to pick up Crash Bandicoot series, the Spyro the Dragon series. And this one surprises me. The last one surprises me. Ice Age. That's not the last one. <laughs> Prototype. That one surprises me. <laughs> yeah. It's a good game. Because I thought the one they were going to keep didn't was we Ghostbusters. Didn't we talk about it getting killed last week? I, we Dude, talked about it being turned into a Spider-Man game. <laughs> I thought everything was, I thought this was pretty much a done deal. Like Ghostbusters was going to be an acty title and it evidently is not. Uh, apparently yeah. not. And they also said one unannounced game that they're going to keep. But uh, the weird thing about, yeah, yeah, the weird thing about Ghostbusters is that they just did, they just showed it off so much last week at Comic Con, well, and it looked good. And do you have the quote they're saying from the license holder, Sony, whatever, whoever holds the license? It's like Sony Pictures Entertainment Limited. They're saying they're considering now that it might come out next year for the 20th anniversary of the film. Oh, I did not get that. I saw that today. So they just sit down and hold on it for no other reason than to put it out with the anniversary of the film. That's a new rumor. Yeah. So oh. included in the uh, the ones that Activision will not be publishing, Brutal Legend, Wet, 
Ghostbusters. I, I'm really sad about what? Wet is still a live project? No. <sighs> Chronicles of Riddick, Assault on Dark Athena, World in Conflict, Soviet Assault, 50 Cent, Blood on the Sand, which I'm surprised, I'm surprised I'm that they're not that doing up. that. I love that game. I'm surprised they're not doing that just because the last one sold so well. You'd think they'd and want And it to. got so much positive attention. Uh, that's true. <laughs> Zombie <laughs> Wranglers. Wet, on the other hand, wait, wait. Might, Wet might have been the most embarrassing game demo I've ever had to yeah, sit Yeah, but what's Zombie Wranglers? Uh, I think it was an XBLA game. <laughs> that sounds awesome. But I would say, of all these games, I think Wet will be the only one that doesn't find a publisher right yeah. away. But Leisure I think, Suit Larry? I think yes, even, some even, probably. even Larry. Probably. Yeah. I think these games will all find their way to other publishers. And by right away, you mean ever, right? About Wet? <laughs> we'll see. But I hope so. I want to see Riddick. Specifically Brutal Legend. Mm -hmm. We will see it from a major publisher. Well, they uh, went on this week. Uh, actually, Variety published an article. Well, first off, actually, Tim Schafer on his blog wanted to kind of calm fans down. So he said he posted some picture of like a, a bull weevil or something. And then if you looked at the alt text of the picture, it said Brutal Legend is fine. Uh, and then I mean, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going theor to theorize right here. I'm saying it's going to be published by MTV Harm MTV under EA partners. Well, Variety did a report from an inside source that said Double Fine is now in talks about cutting a new deal. There's probably going to be news very soon. He said that he couldn't give out specific info, but it may not be from a traditional publisher, whatever that means, which could could be what you're referring to. Because originally when it was going to be an Activision game, they could have tied in the Guitar Hero thing with it because mm -hmm. it had used the guitar controller and now it can be the rock band. Uh, in addition to that, a CR, uh, Sierra PR person said that Ghostbusters is not canceled and will not be canceled. I'm sure, like you said, a lot of these games, they're going to find other publishers. Yeah. They're big enough that they're probably going to accept for maybe one. I, why would, if you're Activision, why would you not take Ghostbusters? I mean, it's weird. From, it's from having bizarre. seen where Ghostbusters is and having played with it, you know, like we played at E3, you saw it at Comic Con. Why would you not just, I mean, that game's done. It's you, ready to you come out. Fill it's, some there, it's there. You got to fill some holes for your seven Guitar Hero SKUs. And is it, is, it a it's not a shooter. is it a long term milkable franchise? I mean, look at the stuff they kept. <laughs> You know, Spyro. Yeah, that mm. will... Spyro? Has that been making Dude, money? Yeah. It's been really? making a ton of money. On handhelds. Yeah, when okay. it moved over to handhelds, okay. it went great. Yeah, it's actually... Crash Bandicoot? Has that been making money? Kids, kids love the Crash and Spyro. Wow. You could do episodic Ghostbusters. Uh, one of the ramifications of this, Ludlum Entertainment, which manages the works of Robert Lund Ludlum, announced that they have reacquired the rights to create video games based on Ludlum's novels, including, of course, the Bourne novels. Um, Sierra published The Bourne Conspiracy, or Vivendi, I suppose. And uh, so basically, this is probably a result of the uh, Activision dropping well, they, them as well. Didn't they even say that push came to shove, they would publish the next one themselves? Yes, uh, they said, let me see here. We have a quote from Jeffrey Weiner, who is the chairman and CEO of Ludlam Entertainment. He mentioned that they're seeking partners and new investors for upcoming projects. So it could end up being something they publish themselves. It could end up being something where they just find a new publisher. He also said uh, that the Born games are perfect for... Let's see here. Uh, he, he said they want to um, capitalize on the accelerated migration from personal computers and game consoles to a wide variety of mobile devices, online multiplayer games, oh, and great. social media applications. Well, and you know, awesome. You know, Ludlum Entertainment is, has such a storied history as an amazing game developer and publisher. I'm sure they'll be great. I can't wait for the born <laughs> mobile games. And I also can't wait for Fable 5. Wait, wait, wait. Fable <laughs> 2 comes out first. Wait That's going to be on the Xbox 1280. I'm skipping that. Uh, Peter Molyneux, an interview with Game Trailers, he said that uh, he wants to continue the Fable series up to a total of five games. He says, we've got plans for Fable 3, 4, and 5. It's a big story arc, and if you play Fable 2, you'll recognize some things from Fable 1. Much like Police Academy. Fables <laughs> in space. Exactly I mean, like, like Police Academy. Does that mean Fable 2 is going to have a guy that does like funny noises? And farts. <laughs> he will be farting. I mean, the running joke is that Molyneux always dreams too big, and now he's like, oh, I've got ten games. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it's like uh, five. Five. Ten will be next year. And in addition to Fable 3, 4, and 5, he lets slip that he's uh, developing another ex mystery project. He said it's the result of an experiment that went incredibly well, and we thought this has got to be a game, but he didn't reveal anything else about it. I heard he wants to make a sports game, so we'll see. I also heard he was doing it. He was thinking of doing an MMO. Was that? That's all of them. MMO sports game. It's a sports MMO fable. Nah, wait a minute. Game. Wait a minute. <laughs> Peter and a and and an MMO might be a good fit. Right. I mean, it's kind of a it's of kind of a constantly evolving animal. I mean, once you get it out as a beta, then you're fine, and then you just and it keep removes one of the difficult bits, which is you know non-player character. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, It'd be interesting to see. I mean, I think that. The, yeah, it'll be interesting. To see. Fable MMO. Fable MMO. That, that, would, that, would, that, would, that would work That would really work well. That's it would really work well. It does seem like a natural a, fit. And you could spend a lot of time collecting hats. How about and boots and, and leggings. And leggings. BC MMO. Mixed with Caveman Olympics. It's a sports game. It's MMO. It's I rented that BC. as a kid. BC Olympics. Caveman yes. Olympics. Anyway. 
All right, uh, Shane, you mentioned the seven Guitar Hero SKUs that we're likely to see next year. Yes. Along with those, you'll be able to try out the new Logitech Guitar Hero instruments. Wait, we Whoa. saw the Rock Band instruments. We saw the Rock yeah, Band instruments. Yeah. Those were pretty awesome. Well, There's some dude who's sending us some more instruments, by the way. Nice. Activision announced uh, that they're collaborating with Logitech to develop the ultimate Guitar Hero peripherals. Basically, it actually seems like sort of a response to those to the, to rock the, band, the Mad the, uh, Cats one we the saw. The Ion yeah. Drum Kit was that the oh, we saw that one, which was insane. It was pretty it's fucking nuts. Horrifically amazing. <laughs> well, it's basically a, a complete digital drum set. Well, it's just the minus one that, the I mean, it's a USB. It's three. It's, it's three hundred dollars. You can plug it into a PC. And yeah, it will work so you, as a digital drum set, right? Yeah, you can actually buy the sequencer box and stick it on the frame next to it, and then you basically have an entire digital drum set right. I in front was kind of me. surprised that the first one sort of didn't. Do that, you know. Well, it's an evolutionary process, yeah. John. It's and, an evolutionary and it's a way process. Of getting another three hundred dollars out of you. Uh, no, it's an evolutionary <laughs> evolutionary process, John. You have to understand. I have to understand, my good man. Uh, Logitech's vice president Bruce Lancaster said a few years ago, Logitech refined the consumer steering wheel market with high-end controllers that enhance racing games. Now we're looking forward to elevating the market for premium music-based video game controllers in a similar fashion. What's great about this is that the publishers are now saying, "Hey, you know, uh, we'll sell you some crappy plastic instruments, then you can buy some more exactly. expensive ones to make your more expensive game." even more expensive. And, and the, the interesting yeah. question here too is that uh, we had we recently learned that the Guitar Hero instruments are supposedly going to be compatible with Rock Band, but you have to wonder they have this big exclusive deal with Logitech now. Are, are these nicer Logitech instruments not going to be compatible? It's we a don't mystery. Know. We don't know. Wrapped within an enigma. And if you prefer Rock Band, you can check out the Rock Band Live Tour, which is kicking off this October. Awesome. Dashboard Confessional. This is pretty ballsy. rocking. It's like, it's like 28, 29 dates or something. I mean, it's huge. Yeah, it is big. Uh, Panic at the Disco, Plain White Tees, and some band named The Cab that I've never heard of before. All these bands but that I would make fun of Nick. Sounds Twitter, emu. But <laughs> bunch but of emus. I like, pla the cool, I like Panic the cool, at the Disco. The, I think the cooler it. thing about this is that they're doing these local contests and the people that win the uh, rock band contests. Yep, yep. And so they get to go on stage. Exactly. Uh, basically, this kicks off on October 5th. Uh, it's going to be... <laughs> beer bottles thrown at them. Yeah, but like... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a tour across the country. Gamers you are going to be able to perform on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Rawhide. Okay. You have to, you have to play, bird request. You have to go play, play in a cage. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> e I'm pretty sure emo, <laughs> emo fans don't throw bottles. Uh, uh, gamer, gamers perform uh, between sets and the winning bands, quote unquote, are going to be selected by local radio stations. And uh, Gamers perform between sets. It's going to be like really? this, that scene so I, in, in Roadhouse. That's right. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's the scene in Blues Brothers. It's Blues Brothers. When they go to the, uh, when they go to the country western bar. It's essentially the same scene. <laughs> it is sort of the same. It is sort of the same scene. Uh, all four of these bands are going to be, uh, the bands that are actually performing, um, are going to be featured in a downloadable content pack that's coming up for the game. And tickets How many are going to go so Points on for sale. that? I, I don't know. They well, haven't said. Of course, hundreds of points. Uh, tickets are going to go on sale on August 8th. You can check out www.rockbandlivetour.com for info on that. And then we have Square Enix, their president's discussing platform neutrality on gamesindustry.biz. Yuichi Wada, basically, he said. Um, Square needs to make stuff for every console. Okay. Because Square is, likes money. Which is different than uh, than previous generations, I suppose. Um, he says, he also went on to say that the main point at the moment is to own original IP. It's very important. He says if you own original IP, you can use it for movies, music, other stuff. And he said that Western studios apparently have just started to pick up on this. The Dead Space thing, right? With yeah, the Dead Space thing is really, really... They had a big uh, panel at Comic-Con where they talked about the way that they're expanding the Dead Space IP. So it's this new original IP from EA, but it's not just a video game. They're doing a comic book, they're doing an animated movie, and I'm sure they're, you know, if Dead Space is successful, which is pretty likely, they'll probably spin it out from there I and mean, do like... You guys seem pretty up on it, on the, you know, the guys that went to Comic-Con, mm -hmm. but to me, it just it seems a little presumptuous. What, Dead Space? Yeah. No, it's really good. That you're gonna it buy, is. That you're going to buy into the fiction and... Yeah, it it seems Well, that's like the part. Well, I, yeah, I, okay, I, that, I, that, I part, that part that. is presumptuous, but the game itself is quite good. It is quite good. I mean, yeah. like, because it's like... I would get this, like, sort of, you know, having stuff queued up that they're not announcing yet and saying, if the game does well, then we have these other things that we can right. trigger to perpetuate right. yeah. the world. But to say up front, it's a We're doing comic this. book and a movie well, and a game. and it's But it's almost like it, it's kind of presumptuous, but it's also kind of cool that they're trying to do it and right. trying to make you this. Know, people have had comics for their games before, but the, yeah, the movie thing we'll wait and see. But the game the, itself is good. The argument <laughs> would be that they're generating all this momentum at the same time and not waiting for it to be successful the, to add on, right? The big difference, too, Shane, is that they've they've said, like, they compared it to the Star Wars trilogy right. where they said, okay, that's 
a little heavy. That's presumptuous. The comic yeah. is That's the first part of the trilogy. It's a the bit animated heady. movie is is uh, The Empire Strikes Back, and then uh, I mean, the game is Return of the Jedi. The animated movie better be really fucking good. So, <laughs> you know, Square Enix has been all about the polymorphic content for about four years now, and they've had their successes and have had their failures. Polymorphic content. Yeah, that's Explain it, that's to me what you mean. Polymorphic content. It's a game. It's a movie. It's an anime. Oh, okay, okay, it's okay. a comic book. It's, it's a breakfast right. cereal. It's a... And a lot of that is good. a lot of that is just in Japan, right? It's a right. But like, but like Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy, they've they've yeah. done really well with these things, the compilations. So I think it's smart that Square is doing this. However, just to, re to revisit what I said, like back at the E3 Poolcast, right now in Japan on Friday, the August first, I mean August second, is the big event that's happening in Tokyo for all of Tetsuya Nomura's games, right. for all the Kingdom Hearts, all the Final Fantasies, all that jazz. Our very own Jeremy Parrish there. Yeah. So watch one up because what I said about the pendulum swinging back towards Square Enix's <laughs> favor in the. PS3 will be revealed at that thing. So well, there you go. At least part of that. Right, I wish I could talk about it now, but it's like the the content that's on the Blu-ray disc of Advent Children will do something on. I your think PS3. you just did talk about. It'll it. do something on your PS3. There you go. Uh, Wada was also asked if they have any plans for the Wii, which is a system that Square hasn't done much with yet. He said uh, he said they'd like to satisfy different types of consumers with the Wii, including so we'll get a Chocobo game. He says learning titles, traveling titles, and uh, wine. <sighs> well, and a lot of people <laughs> no idea what that means. Uh, really. A lot of people have asked what with happened. An H? Well, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people ask what happened to Square Enix's Crystal Chronicles, the Crystal Bearers game, which they showed a really impressive trailer of yeah, where is two that? years ago. It's for been Ryan. replaced by a guide to find Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, s the story I heard was that that trailer was kind of bullshit, and the game is very, very slow and leave me made. He really said wine? They have a wine game for DS. Learning in titles, Japan. Okay. traveling, yeah. Or wine. In, in Japan, a DS Square Enix has a like a, a <laughs> non-games series with a wine game and a game where you watch a dog listen to classical music. Excellent. I really <laughs> hope that makes it to the U.S. <laughs> and enjoy a nice glass of pino. If you'd uh, rather play an actual RPG from an RPG maker, we've got the new Devil Summoner got announced this <laughs> week. No. <laughs> Whoa! What? Yeah, you're not a fan. I'm upset. I am a big I fan. I thought you loved it. I yeah, it's on PS2. It is on PS2. Uh, uh, check out this so title, guys. Shin Megami Tensai, Devil Summoner, Radu Kutsunoha versus the King of Abaddon. I mean, it actually looks really good. However, my big thing is my <laughs> it's awesome. My badass title. Right, my favorite Shin, <laughs> my favorite Mega Ten artist ever, Mr. Kaneko, is back after leaving the company. Nice. Right. And he's like the best artist ever. And I would love to see his work in high res on 360 or PS3. And instead, I get to play it on PS2. Can you can you reduce that to initials for me? <laughs> What's the acronym? S M T D S. R K T K A. Needs more vowels. Awesome. Needs more vowels. That does need it's more vowels. It's never going to work. Uh, it's going to be an action Fail. action role playing <laughs> game for the PS2, as Shane said. It needs a vowel move. Takes you to the 1930s. Of course, there's monsters, etc. Yes. Um, <laughs> let me see here. Japanese fans are going to be getting the game on October 23rd, and uh, it's going to cost around $68, 7,300 yen for the Japanese edition, which comes with a free soundtrack disc. Then they're going to have a special edition that's going to cost around $97 that includes a whole other game, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne Maniacs Chronicle Edition, which is a Chronicle really edition. awesome name. That's CE. Not collectors, but Chronicle Edition. Someone needs to sit down with Japanese publishers <laughs> collectively and say, enough with the fucking titles. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, so. I like monsters, etc. <laughs> 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 it's like, uh, whatever. <laughs> that would be Some an awesome <laughs> subtitle. Monsters and demons. Monsters and I might, I might have to come up with a new title for you, John Davison. This would be awesome. John Davison, what they play. I have to work on this. Let's think about this. this. <laughs> All right. This, maybe. Um, what they play, cl you know, Champions Edition. Well, we're thinking about that. Valve may be thinking about releasing old titles on the XBLA. Uh They've got the portal coming out. Portal's still alive, which includes. So how the, uh, far back are they talking? Well, the the thing that came up, I think, was Counter Strike, that was offered as an example. I would love to see Half Life, does the original Half Life the, on XBLA. Does the Xbox version of Counter Strike not play, or is it not an Xbox original already? Is uh, it, isn't that Counter Strike? Um, it's correct me a, if I'm wrong. I don't think it is an Xbox original right now. Right? Well, it wasn't. Couldn't it be the Xbox <laughs> One? Was I think it would be better to release a new version was it, on was XBLA. It, was it that Counter Strike Source based? Yeah, yeah. No, no. It was no. pre-Source. Yeah, pre -source. yeah oh, Counter Strike okay. One is regular. Yeah, but this so there is a newer version of CS. Yeah, yeah. Right. There is a Source version that could be that could be what they're talking about as well. Uh, basically, in an interview with the official Xbox magazine, um, Doug Lombardi said they're considering the possibility of digging into their library, releasing some of their older titles. He says, you know, we're trying to make Steam this place where we have all of our games cataloged. 
and uh, we'd love to do that, but this is our first step at doing that beyond the PC, speaking about Portal. It's probably thinking of, like, I think we'd think Half-Life and the Half -Life add-ons, like, Blue Shift yeah. and all that kind of stuff. That would be, f I think that would be really cool. Uh, Blue Shift was good. That would, that would Blue go Shift really was well. good. Especially with the rumors of Duke Nukem 3D coming to XPLR. Mm -hmm. Did, um, did the Dreamcast one, Red Shift, did that ever come? It was, <laughs> it was reviewed in magazines, yet it never was released. It was never released, That's right. Yeah. Which would go to a great suggestion we had this m this morning on my Twitter of great big titled games that never hit the shelves. Well, that's a fun one. Which I think will be a fun one. We should, we're saying, gonna, and style. We'll do that in an upcoming one. Just on a Retronauts? No, we'll do it. We'll do it on this show. Uh, Lombardi did also reemphasize that the Portal Still Alive is going, not, not, gonna, not a true sequel to Portal, but rather a re-release with 10 or 20 new challenges. Which is a little disappointing, I thought, yeah. but... Ryan called. Ryan called it like the day of. You know. I know. I just think it's so funny that you guys say it's disappointing because right when that game came out, everybody was like, "I wish well, there was more." Content. Are you excited to buy it again with ten? New That's the thing. Is like, puzzles? I wish it was like a no. full expansion pack. Wait or till something. there's pricing on it. Hmm. Wait That's till true. That's true. It. It's not going to be like two hundred points. <laughs> no, I don't think it'll be two hundred <laughs> points. But if it was eight hundred points, would that be the end of the world for, I mean, for ten new puzzles? If you didn't play <laughs> Portal before and. The people who didn't play Portal aren't the people yeah. who are excited about so Portal. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, I know. So, I mean, it would be nice if they offered it, like, just yeah. the new levels as a standalone. Right, right. It would be That would be the right way to do it. All right. Along with Square Enix, Electronic Arts is going to be focusing a little more on the Wii. Their CEO, John Ricky Tiello, said... Uh, <laughs> how does Best that, how pronunciation that? ever. That, that was awesome. Know. I believe it's Richitello. Richitello. No. John Ricky Tavi Tiello. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's a nice guy, I'm sure. I just don't know how to say his name. Uh, Ricatello. Ricatello. Got it. Uh, so he was uh, he was very open about the fact he says they made a mistake this generation by focusing on the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 instead of the Wii. He says we made the wrong call, uh, which made the transition to the next generation harder than it would otherwise be. But now we're catching up, and I think we're fine. Which you know, hopefully. And then he announced to Boom Blocks too. But, no, but, he, he, but he announced that Boomblox sold like magically 450,000. 450, we heard, we thought it was only like 20,000, and like, oh no, it actually it's a huge success. Well, what happened was, uh, well, it's continuing to sell, which is what yeah. they said they're, well, they're they, hoping they, it would they do. They likened it to Dark Side of the Moon, and it kind of is. That happens. They likened with. it to Dark Side of the Moon. They did, and it's a valid comparison. That, that kind of thing happens true. with Wii <laughs> games a lot, where in, instead of because like the first month it did 60,000, right. Yeah. But it's continued to do pretty sort of reasonable monthly numbers. It's it's not like the the normal thing that we expect with the game where it's on the shelf for a couple of weeks and how well it does that cu first couple of weeks is it for the Long game. Long tail. Well, one of one yeah. of their one of uh, EA's upcoming Wii titles got leaked by publishers this week and it's called like Celebrity Sports Showdown for Wii. It comes out in November and everyone's wondering what are the celebrities that are engaging in these fun Wii sports like activities. EA. And you know, I don't. I wish oh. I do. I hope it involves Britney Spears <laughs> and Lindsay Lohan and. Her friend Sam. That's a whole That's different. Right. That's a whole different kind of game. In a magical <laughs> threesome. <laughs> uh, a stronger focus on Wii development, of course. They're not going to completely disregard the other consoles. That threesome would definitely be developing the Wii. <laughs> Uh, okay. Right. Uh, Rickatella says, unusual in this cycle is there's a second and third place that is meaningful against which we can build a profitable business. He went on to say they have 40. Whoa, whoa, hold on a second. Oh, 40 Let me address that for He said what? He says, unusual in this cycle is there's a second and third place that is meaningful against which we can build a profitable business. That's a really interesting proposition, isn't it? Actually, there's a second and third place that he's shooting for. Is that what he's saying? No, 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 no the consoles. No, consoles. consoles. Like EA always only went with the winner. That's why right. they didn't make games for Dreamcast because right. they knew it was going to die. And now they realize like, none of these consoles are going to die. We should make games for all of them. Yes. And I think that ties in with the, the fact that they're going to be able to do a lot of digital distribution at some point. And, yeah. you know, they can yeah. make more money off that. You took a lot of shit, by the way, in the threads for your digital distribution stuff. You should, did, did you read our threads for the show threads Not last week? Not for that, no. Yeah, you should go back and read the show threads it's, last week. It's coming. Give as much shit as you like. It's what's going to happen. I agree. There we go. Uh, and then breaking news to close off the show. Do do next do do Doom do game do do has been announced at QuakeCon. Doom, Doom 4? Wow, you guys are... are uh, they didn't say a title, but I would assume they're probably just going to call it Doom 4. We don't really know Does yet. Does it involve sure. space marines and flaming skulls? Here's what uh, Todd Hollins had ha said when he I announced so. it. <laughs> he said, there will be guns, blood, demons, and gibbs. I hope it's wow. the movie, the game. Well, all those things <laughs> in the, the same the all those things in the same game, they are reinventing Doom. I know. 
Uh, one fan, actually, when he made the announcement, one fan shouted out that he'd like flashlight tape in this one. <laughs> and Holland said, said that that fan will get his Quake Live account banned. <laughs> nice. That's um, excellent. Id That's playing good, to good their humor. base. They said that uh, the game is going to be built on the Id Tech 5 engine, which is also what Rage is being built on. Right. Um, but he said it's going to look like it's built on another engine because it's going to use three times the horsepower. He said Rage is actually running at 60 frames per second, whereas the new Doom game will run at 30 frames per second because of how much power it's using. So you may have to travel into the future and buy three video cards linked together to make <laughs> yes. this game work. I was that's expecting true. you to say 180 frames per second. Don, uh, I would hope so. John, actually, that's what uh, that's what my freelancer How much would those three cards well. cost you, Shane? John, how, would, well, how much would you venture to spend on a PC to make this game run well? I I'm just curious. $7,000. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know <laughs> Rage probably have someone, have someone install your video card for you. That's oh yeah, right. no, yeah. Have, <laughs> not someone. Mark McDonald will install his video oh, card for. Speaking him. of Mark McDonald, I believe he's going to be on this show in two weeks. Oh, oh wow! So. Fuck, I'm not going to be here in two weeks. I had dinner with him. Bonus. He was, he was in San Francisco <laughs> oh, for four. Mark and guest host. Yeah, for 36 hours, and he That's says he, he wants to come back. So man, I would cool. If Mark, Mark, if you're out there, you got to be here when I when I'm here. I'm going to be out the week of August 11th. He, he, Mark has to be here a week that I'm here. I can't stand Mark being here and I'm not here. <laughs> or I'll go to him. Whatever, um, whatever it takes. <laughs> Sounds very <laughs> fanatical right now. We yeah. should keep in mind, uh, getting back to the Doom, regarding the PC thing. <laughs> you mentioned the Doom. I, I just want to wrap they, up. Did they show the Doom? Uh, they did not show it yet, but they said, uh, you know, their Carmack explained, John Carmack got on stage and he explained that it is moving past their old development style of just focusing on one game at a time, so they're kind of developing this alongside Rage. But Rage probably, you know, who knows when that'll be out, probably late next year at the earliest, and I'm sure Doom won't be out for at least a year or two after that. But he did say that um, you know Doom is going to be multi-platform, but he said it's going to look significantly better on the PC because by the time it comes out, the PC is going to be far ahead of the current platforms, current generation Naturally. platforms. Naturally. So there we go. That's all we know about Doom at this time. Maybe there will be more info coming out from, uh, from QuakeCon. We might have more info by the time that this is up. But we'll see. Shane has his fingers on his flute. I forgot that I brought this along. I was really bored. I thought we'd be waiting for a long time for John to show up, so I brought lots of magazines. And By the way, speaking chips. of id, I had an interesting tip from one of my friends who's down in the Austin development community, and he pointed out that something that, we, I mean, this is a lot of interesting thing, like the press doesn't always pick up on development community changes, but id actually brought in a new creative director in 2005. He didn't get to work on Doom 3. This will be, his first job will be the stuff that's coming out of the Rage Engine. And his prior projects were Prince of Persia and Assassin's Creed. And very he has a very, a very uh, mature artistic vision that's not not TV monitors growing out of your chin. Yeah, it's, it's I think interesting. I'm not, I'm I think we might see that start popping up in Rage as we see more of it. Fewer, I think it's fewer monster closets, perhaps. Uh, oh, this is artistic vision. Related to that, another piece of news hit this week is that um, Jordan Mechner is apparently working on a new Karateka game. Wow. You remember that? Yes. I mean, that game. Cool. I it's the love that game. Wow. When it came out. It's the first. Dude, fight. that was it's the, the first fighting game. Phil, John just upstaged you on the entire yeah, fucking did. news stage segment. Wow. That was jerk. Sorry. Would you like to work? <laughs> it was you talking excuse. about Prince of Persia made me think of it. Would you like some freelance news? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Give me a call later. Ouch. I'm looking for a news. I'm editor. fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> At this point. <laughs> Brittany I has I hear some, no one left. Some, some flute playing. Shane, play us out. Play us out. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany has no one left. The former assistants left. I thought you could actually That's play. Awesome. <laughs> Sam Lifty, he's left. This is my favorite Legend of Zelda. Adnan, the bad boy. Gone, Laura Lynn, gone. Jamie, Jamie Lynn, that's her sister. She has her own baby to worry gone. about. But you know what? Luckily, Madonna standing by her side. We'll stand by your side if you come by boards that one up.com. Until next week for Andrew, Shane, Phil, and John. This is Garnet. We are ghosts. Oh, by the way, hold on. Before we can go ghost. Yeah. Are we announcing? L live show at PAX. Oh, yeah, live show at PAX. Live show at PAX, which, by the way, we would love to tell you when it, do you know what it is? Friday night at Friday night. 6.30, I want to say. We'll All right. put it up on the blog and stuff. And evidently, I we are going to have. Sorry, guys. Are you going to be there? Yeah, I'll be there. John's going to be there. Shane's going to be there. Nobody's going to show there. up. It'll be like last year. We're going to work on some special guests. And yes, we'll see. I think we're going to have. I won't be there. Nobody's going to show up. They don't care. <laughs> and then we're going to have 300 limited edition t-shirts to give away. Nice. They're, I didn't know they're that. Kinda, they're kind of crap. I mean, I'll just say <laughs> right now. <laughs> but they're limited edition. <laughs> wait, we'll wait, wait a second. Let me, let me explain them to you. <laughs> Garnet, this isn't how you get the audience excited. <laughs> Simon designed them. Simon has a good he artistic has a good, he has a good eye. eye. They're, they're, very, they're very Euro minimalist, kind of very plain. They're white. They're white t-shirts. All right. 
They say nothing on them. I can't no. wait. <laughs> anyway, come to PAX. You'll see us. So anyway, there you go. Uh, Four-minute warning. Thread will be up in a couple of days or so. Come check it out on boards.1up.com. Until next week, we are Ghost. <laughs>